What's up and welcome to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech and this is Hero. Woo. <laughs> Good boy. Okay. Uh so Welcome back to the live stream. We are doing the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16 today, and we are going to talk about all kinds of stuff. So up here, we've got all list of everything we're going to do today. We're going to do a value comparison against the competition to start with. We've got uh, three or four laptops we're going to compare with, as well as looking at the different versions of the Neo 16 that you can buy. Um, so looking at the different GPU, CPU, and display options. Then we're gonna unbox the laptop, check the power adapter out. We're gonna check the quality control of the laptop, look at the, see if there's anything broken on the laptop. We're gonna do a flex test. We're gonna disassemble the laptop and check for upgradability. Analyze and review the ports. Check the webcam quality. I don't think this has Windows Hello on it, but if it does, we'll check that. Uh, test the keyboard, mouse, the display, the speakers. We have a decibel meter. We're gonna be testing how loud the speakers get. We're gonna test how loud the fans are in different fan profiles. Uh, and then we're going to do some Cinemage R23 and Time Spy testing for our synthetic tests. And then we're going to go into a whole suite of video game testing. At the end, we're going to summarize everything we found out about the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16. That's quite the name. I don't know why they keep adding new things into an already complicated name. It is ridiculous. Um, without further ado, let's get into the value comparison against the competition. All right, so this is one of the most interesting laptops that has come out this year so far, at least in theory. I am I think it's priced maybe a little bit high against competition. Now, if you are interested in checking out um, and looking for the best possible laptop money can buy uh, for your dollar, I highly recommend checking out the laptop list, which is linked in the description down below. Now, there are not only summaries of each of the laptops, there's also benchmarks or estimated benchmarks. Estimations are rounded to the 100 value. Um, so this is like an estimated value most likely, but there are benchmark sources here. If you're curious whether it's an estimated score, it is an estimated score, you can see right there. But there are links to the actual sources for the laptops that have legitimate data. We always do check and look for legitimate data. So you can find reviews that way. Now, if you click on the expand button here, you can get pictures and other information as well as see the benchmark data right here as well. Now I've conveniently located all of the top deals here that I think are the most interesting and best value for your money. Um, and one column I'd highly recommend paying attention to is the CPU performance per dollar and the GPU performance per dollar because um, this will really indicate to you the level of value that that laptop has. If I zoom in, you can kind of see a, lot of, a little bit better. Right now, the, the highest GPU performance per dollar is this Acer Nitro 5 with a 3070 Ti with 999. That is absolutely insane. 3070 Ti QHD display on that too. So from in terms of value right now, I think that's the value king. There's also the G14 right now that's 799. That's probably the best deal out of any laptop uh, that's a small portable laptop, though this display usually has some ghosting to it. Not sure uh, if it's been fixed on this year's model, but when I tested it previous versions, this one had just a little bit of ghosting on the display. Wasn't awful, but it was noticeable for someone who's an esports gamer. Good enough for competitive, uh, good enough for casual games though. Now, another highly competitive laptop would be the Lenovo Lock, the Pulse 15, both of which are on sale right now. And the Asus Strix G16, which has a 4060, costs $130 more than the Acer Predator Helios uh, 300. But uh, we're going to be comparing all of these different laptops today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into it. So this is the specs for the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16 that we are doing today in this unboxing. So it's a $1199 i5 13500HX, so HX being a, uh, a little bit higher end processor than just the H series. Usually it's undervoltable as well, but I'm not sure about this i5. RTX 4050 in here should be a higher wattage, 16 gigs of DDR5, 512 gig SSD, and a full HD plus, meaning 16 by 10, supposed to be 400 nits, 100% sRGB. Now we are gonna be putting that to the test in our display testing today. Now um, with no sale, no additional, um, price discounts or anything, you're getting $7.42 per dollar, uh, performance per dollar and $14.76 CPU performance per dollar, which is actually exceptionally good. But the, uh, the GPU performance per dollar is good, but not necessarily amazing at 5.73 pounds. This is going to be a somewhat portable, but also a little bit bulkier than some of the thinner, lighter 
laptops out there. Now this is a 16 inch display, so 5.7 pounds per 16 inches is not bad. Um, Rice Stage says, I'm choosing between the Razer Blade 16 and Legion Pro 7i Gen 7 Max out. The point issue I'm choosing is the screen. Is the screen on the Legion good enough to counter the new features on the Razer Blade? Um, between those two, I'd probably go the Legion route, but also the Blade 16 is not a bad one. Um, am I going to unbox the Predator Triton 17X? Maybe. We'll have to see. What's up, Systems Reality? Um, the Razer Blade has a 4070 and 16 gigs of RAM. The Legion has 32 gigs. And the Legion, I'm guessing, for the same price, has like a 4080 or 4090. So I would, I mean, for me, I would go with the 4080 or 4090. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, jumping back over. Let's move on. So what are the different um, options that you can get configured for the Neo 16? Now, personally, at 1199, I'd probably wait for this thing to go on sale. It probably will go on sale. I'm guessing down to at least $1,100 or $1,000 sometime in the next few months here. But 1199 is an okay price, not a great price in my opinion. Um, Acer Predator Helios Neo 16. This has an i7 and it costs $150 more. It doesn't seem like it's worth the upgrade. I don't think. I, mean, I thought this was supposed to have a 4060 in it, not a 4050. Um, for $150, if it doesn't have a 4060, it has a 4050. This is not worth the upgrade. Don't get this version of the Neo 16. Looks like the user reviews are now are 4.7, which is very good for the Neo 16. So if you want to buy this, I did buy this from Best Buy, uh, but this is not sponsored by Best Buy. This is all entirely me buying it and reviewing it myself. Um, but if you do use the links in the description um, or the links in the um, if you do use the links in the description or the links on the sheet, it does help support me financially. So thank you very much if you do choose to use them. Now, here is the 4060 version. It costs $1579. That is uh, too much, in my opinion, for a 4060. Not really. I don't think this would be worth the upgrade. You get an SSD upgrade. You get a display upgrade. 500 nits, 100% sRGB, very similar to the Legion's um, display. The CPU is a nice upgrade, but overall, I feel like this configuration should probably cost 1450 maybe 1500 but uh 1579 is too much i would say don't pay more than 1500 dollars for this wait for it to go on sale uh for this version this is the acer predator helio 16 not the neo 16 but i just wanted to point out the 4080 options here 2299 if you want to go up to a 4080 which if you can swing it, a 4080 is a huge upgrade. Um, and this is one of the more inexpensive 4080s as well. So notice that the design is just a little bit different on the Helio 16 versus the Neo 16, though this is the Predator Helios, Neo, like it's the naming conventions, very messed up and very weird. Anyway, so the Acer Nitro 5 3070 Ti, one terabyte SSD, QHD 165 Hertz, 300 nits, 100% DCI-P3 color gamut, supposedly, $11 GPU performance per dollar. This obviously is not going to be as premium in some ways, uh, but it should be quite nice um, overall for its performance per dollar. It's going to be more of a cheaper, more plasticky build. But if I had any number one recommended uh, laptop for the getting the most performance per dollar today, this is it at $9.99. Um, certainly a better deal than what you're getting in the Predator Neo 16. Um, at least if it's not on sale. Now, if this was if this was on sale for a thousand dollars, you know, I'd still probably be recommending the Acer Nitro Five over the 3070 Ti, uh, you know, or the, with with the 3070 Ti here, um, just because it's so much value and performance for your money. Though I don't think this deal is only going to end seven hours from now, so this is not going to be very relevant for people um, in the near future. Um, you can see it's normally priced at thirteen twenty nine. Okay, Lenovo Lock 16. This is one of the going to be a, a bread and butter competitor against the Predator Neo 16, and this one comes with a 4060 and a Ryzen processor for the same money at 11.99. Um, in addition, the full HD 144 hertz display is 350 nits rated, so it's not quite as good of a display. Um, but overall, this should be a very good competitor against the Neo 16, primarily because it's got the 4060 for the same money, which in, as you can see, gives you $9 of GPU performance per dollar compared to 
This one, which only gives you 742. So um, like I said, I would probably wait for this to go on sale down to uh, probably 999 or maybe 1099 before picking up the Helios Neo 16. It will go on sale eventually, just knowing that over time. Um, but that's kind of where I'm settling here is that the price on this system really should be 999 or 1099 and not 1199. Um, so the Asus Strix G16, this one has an i7 13650H RTX 4060, 16 gigs of DDR5, 512 gig SSD, and a full HD 165 hertz 100% sRGB display. This one provides excellent bang for the buck. It has a nice RGB implementation, um, a nice more premium build quality compared to most of these laptops that we've been just comparing. And I do think that this Strix G16 would be the one that I would pick over the Neo 16 um, right around this price point if it was my money. If not, except, I mean, I would pick this one probably if I'm looking for the most performance per dollar, but if I'm looking for a little more of a premium experience, this Strix G16 is probably the way I would go um, at least like right around 1300 bucks. But, um, but yeah, anyway. So uh, otherwise, yeah, if it's a thousand bucks, I would go Nitro 5, but if it's... Um, if I've got 1300 to spend, I'd probably go Strix G16 because I do love RGB and I do love the cooling solution that this has. It has excellent thermals, great speakers, um, high quality ports. Uh, definitely recommend the Strix G16. I just did an unboxing review of this, so check my live stream history. Um, you can see right here. Uh, if you go through my live stream history, you can find it e quite easily. Um, so that's the price comparison, value comparison against the most competitive laptops to the Neo 16. It's time to unbox the laptop, see what's inside, check out the power adapter. Let's move into that phase. Also, I'm gonna quickly check chat, see if there's any questions. Um, System Jolly Team said, glad I got the Aura 17H when it came out. It's been great so far. Yeah, and that hasn't really gone on sale because it was already priced so well as soon as it came out. Razer 16 versus Zephyrus Duo 16, bought it with a 4080. Um, I would get Duo 16 between those two, but uh, the Razer 16 has its own uh, crowd that loves that too. So I can see why someone would pick either one. Uh, Gen 7 Legion 3080 Ti. Oh, not this year's model with the 40 series. Okay, gotcha. Well, that becomes a little bit tougher to decide. Uh, but if you're getting the, I would go Razer 16 then if you're debating between a Legion 7, Gen 7. Um, yeah, so, oh, and it's, it's a 4070 though. Okay, well, and that's a 4070 versus a 3080 Ti Legion 7i. I would go Legion 7i between those two. Christian says, I want to buy a laptop for editing and gaming. Which one would be better? The Scar 18 or Dell Anywhere M16? Um, I would go Scar 18 if you are deciding between those two for some reason and not considering anything else. Um, but uh, it just depends on your budget. That obviously, you got a high budget if you're debating between Alienware and the Strix Scar series. So, um, okay. So next up, let's go ahead and get to the unboxing. Here is the Predator Helios Neo 16. They've got to change the name. The naming is terrible. It should be just Acer Neo 16. That would be great. Maybe Predator Neo 16, but why does there need to be Helios Neo 16? Like it makes absolutely no sense. You can see the name right here. Boom, right there. Predator Helios Neo 16. What, why does it have to be three words long? I have no idea. Anyway, okay. Uh, we got the Predator logo here uh, on the box. The back side is blank, pretty much empty. Let's go ahead and just open this guy up. There is a carry handle here. All right, so let's go ahead and open the power adapter box to start with. So here's the power adapter box. There's the laptop, power adapter, shabam. This is a 230 watt power adapter. I just like zooming in so people who uh, wanna check that out after the fact can pause it and read it. Um, for example, if they need to buy a second one. All right, so we're gonna set the power adapter down behind us. All 
right, and let's go ahead and grab the laptop, which you can see is inside of this rubber, or not rubber, but like styrofoam encasement. So I'm just going to set this down right here. Okay. So there is quite a lot of papers that are just kind of loosely put into the box, which is kind of weird. This Predator badge thing got crushed. Thank you for joining the Predator team. As a member of this elite group, you'll enjoy the benefits of premium service for your Predator product for one year, limited warranty, 24 seven access to dedicated support team. And they have the phone number right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set this up onto the screen here. For anyone that wants to uh, check that out, number is right here. 1-866-517-2237 for the dedicated support or goacer.com slash predator chat. I do like that they have a dedicated support team for the gaming laptop division. Um, looks like this is just an FCC declaration. All right, I don't know what's in this. So we've got a brown envelope. I have broke the seal on the envelope. Let's check out these top secret documents. Okay, so we have a planet9.gg. It looks like there's a bunch of stickers here that are um, individually, individually peelable. There is an international traveler's warranty. Um, I'm guessing that uh, to get this to work, you probably just got to be in countries that are supported for the warranty, and then it's probably valid. But yeah, obviously you can look up online to see all the details or read through this on your own. So I don't know if I can get this to a point where you could actually read some of it, but I will try for those of you that want to read it and check it out. There we go. Okay. Um, last but not least, we have our Predator Neo 16, Predator Helios Neo 16. Uh, quick setup guide. So open this up. And your Predator Notebook Tour. Looks like we picked the non-English side. But, um, yup. Not seeing anything too special here. Um, looks like the USBs are 3.2 Gen 2 uh, for one, all, two of them, but one of them is Gen 1. So keep that in mind. All right, on to the laptop, the most exciting part. All right, so here is here is the laptop enclosure, and I do think this will protect the laptop pretty well in the event of, you know, it needing to be, uh, you know, in case it drops or something, like it would have to, drop from a really big height in order to damage this laptop inside of this box. All right, so we have a nice, uh, a nice like kind of felt in, uh, wrapping around the, the outside of the laptop. And you can see we've got a metal top lid. It's quite a thick system. Uh, let me pull this light down. Kind of fill in the front light there. Uh, we got two USB A's right here on the right side. Uh, unfortunately, these USB A's are on the right side. I kind of prefer the USB A's mainly to be on the left side, uh, just because if you plug in a mouse, 
you know, you're gonna have that cable right in front of you or any, any peripherals really, um, if you're right-handed. We got a Kensington lock port and a fan exhaust on the right side. On the rear, we have a power adapter port, HDMI 2.1, two Thunderbolt 4s, which is nice to see, and two more fan exhausts. So we got some serious fan exhausts on this, another fan exhaust over here on the right side, an ethernet port that you have to pull down, and it looks like it's uh, on the downward facing, which means you might have to lift the laptop to get this out, which is a little bit of a bummer. Then we got another USB-A, and then a micro SD card slot and a headset port. Now on the front, there are no ports, but that gives you an idea of the laptop thickness um, and size. It's not particularly thin, it's not particularly portable, but it's also not like a behemoth laptop or anything. Uh, and we have another kind of wrapping cover right there. So here is the keyboard and the laptop itself. Now let's go ahead and check out this keyboard and get an idea, feel for it. I'm gonna go ahead and feel each of the keys just to make sure that nothing, you know, I don't get any weird clickiness or a key that is like coming off or something. All of this feels good. That is quite a loud sa startup sound right there. Wow. Um, notice that uh, the arrow keys have this kind of translucent texture around them. This power key has a translucent texture kind of around it. Um, and WASD keys have this translu same translucence. So certain keys are gonna light up a bit more with the RGB. Um, and yeah, now the touchpad feels like a plastic touchpad. I'm pretty sure it's a plastic touchpad, um, which means that it's really not as high quality of a touchpad as I would really love. Um, you know, the, the touchpad itself feels all right. It doesn't feel bad, but it, it does not feel very premium. That's for sure. It feels like a super budget touchpad, um, like what you would get on like the Acer Nitro 5, basically. It feels exactly like that. So that's a little bit disappointing, especially considering the price point of $1,200 on this machine. Like I said, I'd probably wait, recommend waiting to buy this when it goes on sale, and I really do think it will go on sale. Um, so, there is the, um, the metal top lid. The metal top lid does feel quite nice and do a little torquing test. You can see some, I'm, I'm pulling on it pretty hard right here. We're definitely getting some bend here, but it's not bad in terms of build quality, not particularly great. The hinge itself, you know, coming around here, let's go ahead and show you how it's set up. We got two hinge points here. These look pretty, these look like they'll probably hold over time, but I wouldn't say this is a particularly super strong hinge design, uh, but not a bad one. And that's as far back as it can go, right there. So you can go almost all the way back. The hinge does feel quite firm in terms of its strength, which is nice to see. Um, and it does kind of come together at the end. I don't think magnetically, but just the hinge tension and everything kind of just lets go right there. So I went ahead and shut down the laptop so we can take it apart. So we're gonna go ahead and disassemble the laptop and check out the insides. All right. Uh, which is the better laptop, the Strix, G6, the Strix G16 or the Zephyrus G16, both with 4060? Um, well, the Zephyrus G16 is gonna cost more. Um, and it has a few premium features that the Strix G16 doesn't have. Now, the key thing about the Strix series is that it has better thermals, so meaning it can go to uh, a bit higher um, power, I believe, on the CPU. And then in addition, the Zephyrus G16 has Windows Hello and is much thinner. So it's kind of like a trade-off. Do you want something that is thinner and lighter? Then go with the Zephyrus G16, probably. If you want something that is um, a little bit bulkier, has better RGB, like, and has better thermals, go with the Strix G16. Both of them are gonna have about the same levels of performance, but the thing is the Strix G16 is just gonna have a lot better thermals than the Zephyrus. So like thermals meaning like the actual temperature of the CPU, GPU over the long haul is gonna be noticeably lower. And so you're just gonna have, uh, you know, it's gonna, like for example, if you're in a hot environment, 
you know, like a non-air conditioned room in the summertime, the Zephyrus G16 is going to struggle a lot more than the Strix G16. So, but they they both overall have pretty good thermals. Um, but the Strix G16 has absolutely excellent thermals because it was designed with a 4080 and 4090 GPU in mind, and the most powerful CPUs in mind. But the you know the Strix G16 on the low side, you know you get the same thermal cooling solution for the high power gear, but you're just using low power equipment. It makes it so the temperatures are just really superb on the Strix at that price point. So, um, okay, so this one screw over here on the left does not want to come out. It appears to be kind of stuck in there. Let's see if I can get it to pop up. There we go. All right, so all you need to take this apart is a Phillips head screwdriver. All of these screws are just Phillips head, regular, but a small, smaller, size Phillips head. All right, let's see here. So to take this guy apart, where should we start? Kind of looks like this whole back end comes up and out. Okay, so let's go ahead and rotate the camera over here. And let's try to Let's try to get this up. I'm gonna start with the back end. Oh wow, just using my thumb, got it started. Um, see if I can position this correctly. I wanna shout out Into the AM. They make some awesome t-shirts. This is like an astronaut reading a book with like rainbow putty coming out of it. I don't know, it's, I think it's really creative. There's a link in the description down below if you wanna check out Into the AM. There's a 10% off on any orders. Uh, if you use the link, it does help support me as a content creator as well. Anyway, I wear the shirts quite often and they have all kinds of designs from graphic designs to basic t-shirts and shorts and other stuff. They're just really high quality products in general, which is why I uh, let them sponsor my content. So, okay, so looks like we need to take this bottom thing off. So there's a kind of top plate, it looks like. It's kind of snapping up there. Perfect. There we go. So that's kind of like the hinge cover. So you probably gotta take that off first before you can take the chassis off. Because now, now we've got to pry open this guy. Yeah. All right, so we got it started over here. Um, and if you, if you need some tools to open laptops, I would highly recommend the toolkit that I have linked in the description. Um, it's totally up to you, but uh, you can get a cheaper toolkit as well, but the one I got is really high quality and it works really well. Have you ever cut yourself trying to open a laptop? I'm pretty sure I have. Especially on the old metal chassis. But, um, if I did, it, I would say it's probably my fault, really. I mean, this thing... This thing is not coming up easily. There we go. Oh, wow, okay. All right, well, I would say this definitely could be designed a little bit easier to uh, help help people take it off. There we go. It is my first time taking it apart as well, so there's that, but I would say in general, this whole like 
rear chassis where you have to take a cover off and then pry it off the back end is just, it's a tough, nice shot of the back of my head there. Uh, it's a tough model for taking laptops apart in general. Okay, we're gonna try doing all the way around this other side because the land port there kind of makes it hard to get it to come up. So we're just gonna take the guitar pick. I'm gonna try to wedge it in here. Some gentle pressure. Obviously, if things are not coming apart, you gotta just be cautious, careful. You don't wanna break anything. And if things are not coming up, it probably means you forgot to take a screw out, quite frankly. All right, there we go. We got it off, finally. That took a little while. Definitely um, on the in the overall spectrum of things, a little bit on the harder side to disassemble. Okay. Shabam. So there's the internals. The internals are looking quite promising. Um, I like the cooling solution already. And I see quite a bit of upgradability as well right out the gate here. So let's take a look. All right, so the battery pack right here is a 90 watt hour. So very close to the peak, 99 is the limit. Um, we've got our killer 1650i Wi-Fi module here. We have our SSD right here. Um, do we have a secondary SSD slot anywhere on the board? I'm looking. I am looking. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, I don't see a second M.2 slot, which is a little bit disappointing. I was hoping there would be a second one especially on a laptop this big. Um, anyway, we have our two sodium slots right here and right here. Uh, and our, and they're, they're all wrapped in this kind of uh, a black shrouding here. So I can't really see what exact models there are for the, the SSD. So if you're gonna wanna upgrade this SSD drive, you're gonna need to do a swap and replace, maybe like a clone and copy and replace um, if you want to use a new SSD for an upgrade. Um, now, looking at our thermal cooling solution, let's go ahead and zoom in kind of on the back over here. Uh, we've got a dedicated heat pipe. I believe this is gonna be the GPU over here on the left. Um, and the CPU over here on the right. We've got a dedicated heat pipe to just the GPU, another dedicated heat pipe to just the GPU. And then we have two shared heat pipes between the CPU and the GPU. That's gonna allow both fans to effectively cool either the CPU or the GPU when it's primarily a GPU only load or primarily a CPU only load. I really like that. Then we are, I gotta say these fans as well are quite large and they should blow a lot of air, which is obviously the goal of some fans here. Now we have a dedicated CPU heat pipe as well, as well as these metal plates that are gonna go over the VRMs um, for the system. Now, if you're gonna take this all apart and off, you're gonna have to take this whole assembly off and uh, undo all of these screws. It's gonna be, um, looks like not too bad if you wanted to do it, but also not necessarily an easy repaste job if you wanted to do that. Now this does um, come with liquid metal uh, according to Acer's website. So it will be very interesting to see um, how well the cooling solution works. Um, I have high hopes. You know, it's only got an i5 processor in here. I feel like the cooling solution that we have here is almost overkill, almost, you know? So like it's not, it's not, uh, and we only have a 4050 as well. So overall, I think that the cooling solution and the internals here is good. I just wish there was another M.2 slot. I think that'd probably be my primary gripe. We do have our big speakers right here and right here. They don't look like super high quality speakers, but they are on the larger side overall with a bit of subwoofer built on them, it looks like. So we'll have to see how they sound in our speaker test. All right. 
So for upgradability, I would give it a pretty good score, except uh, the, the main downside is taking the bottom off. It's kind of a pain in the butt. And then um, for upgrades, there's not a, a second M.2 slot for, you know, for free. Um, that's kind of a bummer. So putting this thing back together, uh, I would usually start on the back side, make sure the back gets popped down first, then work my way around the sides to the front all the way around and back to the other side. You just wanna make sure everything is nice and snug. All right, very good. And I suppose we should probably put this lid thing back on for the hinge cover as well. So there's the hinge cover right back on there. And let's go ahead and get all the screws back in place. Uh, overall, Overall, I think uh, Acer does need to change their design a little bit so that it doesn't wrap around the back. I think the reason they do the whole wrap around the back thing is that the chassis can be a little bit more rigid, um, which is good. Second SSD slot is to the right of the RAM slots, LSP says. All right, let me check the, let me check the replay. I don't believe you. I don't see any. I don't see any M.2 slot there, LSP. For a second M.2. I see where a couple screws. Oh, oh, yes, you're right. I do see it. Okay, so let me let me show you on stream what he's talk uh, what he's talking about. So we'll just go here, we'll go to the review here. I'll just pull up the, I'm going like the live stream, I invite you guys to like so the live stream. We'll just go here, we'll go to the review here. I'll just pull up, it's funny, I can hear myself. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and pause that and we'll pull back to right here. So the extra M.2 slot is kind of hidden underneath this, um, this shroud right here. And it goes, it extends over here to the right. So if you want to put in another SSD, it's right here. So that's good. It's nice that it has that. Um, Cause I was afraid that it does not, but it does. So it's right there. Cool. All right. That does help in terms of um, upgradability for sure. Um, especially in a laptop this size, I feel like not having a second M.2 is a little weird. So, so yeah. Uh, LAZ says, Gizmo, did you return your Alienware? I bought one and I have the same problem as you. Two performance cores hit 100 degrees Celsius. Any solution to this problem? Um, maybe if you repaste it, you might be able to uh, have improved thermals. Repasting is what I would probably try to do or just returning it. It's up to you. But yeah. Um, it seems like they probably have something wrong with their uh, application process over at Alienware. If a bunch of their laptops are all hitting high degree temperatures on only like two of the cores and all the other cores are cooled properly, it just means that the thermal paste is not covering everything prop, you know, not covering that part of the processing um, cover or whatever, the processor cover. Okay, so all of the screws are in. Just gonna double check, they're all torqued. Um, I do wanna mention, let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom cover here as well while we're at it. So uh, there's a lot of ventilation here, as you can see, um, for, for fan intakes. Uh, this is a plastic bottom. And I gotta say that overall, there's not much height elevation for air going into the system underneath. So that might be a problem. You might want to get something to raise up the bottom, the back of this laptop. Um, today's testing, we are gonna be raising the back up with my little SSD drive. So it's gonna be raised about a half inch. That should help with the airflow. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is definitely a laptop I think that might have airflow problems underneath just getting enough air into the bottom. Um, and you can get little uh, rubber feet you can attach to the back uh, from Amazon uh, if you wanna have something that like kind of stick, makes it stick up like another half an inch or something. Okay, so there's, there's the disassembly. 
Um, an analysis, the power button uh, is over here on the right side. We're gonna go ahead and get the laptop turned on and let me go ahead and get it plugged in. That is a very loud sound. I cannot imagine taking this into class and having that sound go off. Oh my. Now, this power adapter cable is a very nice length, about six feet long on one side and about six feet long on the other side. That's nice. So you're getting probably around, uh, you know, 11, 12 feet of coverage, I would say, which is certainly above average for for laptop cable length these days. Most cables are only about uh, nine to 10 feet, I think. All right, so we're plugged in the back. Beautiful. Yeah, I can just imagine someone goes in to class and they turn on their Neo 16 and it's just like, you know, and everyone in the class and the, the professor just like stops and looks at them like, are you for real right now? And yeah, that's why I don't think brands should do that. Maybe have something that you can turn on if you want it on, but I think most people don't want it on. So I find it a little weird that they do that. All right, so um, on to the next phase. We have done, we have done value comparison, unbox a laptop, review ports, disassemble laptop, quality control testing, we've done that. Um, let's move into the webcam keyboard mouse display test. We did a keyboard and mouse kind of already, but uh, we're also gonna go over the software too. That's something I need to add as a section. All right, so um, let's go ahead and do a little flex test action on the chassis itself. Uh, let's see, let's push this right here. Right there is good, all right. So starting in the bottom right, very solid, good feel. A bit of flex up here in the middle. Almost all laptops have a good amount of flex here. No flex here, very little flex in the, in the front middle. Going along the sides, a little bit of flex over here. A fair bit of flex in the back middle. Almost no flex over here. Right middle, very solid. So middle of the keyboard, quite a bit of flex. Um, a bit more flex, I would say, than average, which is a little disappointing, but I guess that's kind of what you gotta deal with, I guess. Um, all right, so is this metal top lid? It feels, it feels like this is probably a metal keyboard deck. So we have, so in terms of materials, we have a, a metal top lid, a metal keyboard top deck, um, plastic keyboard, obviously, and a plastic underside. Uh, all right, so one thing I'm seeing that's kind of interesting, why, what is this? What is this over here? It's like another power button. Um, you know, so what does this do? Let's find out what this does. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and press it. So that is the Predator Sense button, which is basically like their Armory Crate or um, control software. Um, so Predator Sense, this is asking me what I wanna do with the button it looks like. So mode switch key, mode cycling, AC, quiet, balance, performance, turbo. On battery, it'll switch between balanced and eco mode or you can make it turbo on or off with one click. Only supports AC plug-in. So we'll keep it to the um, mode cycling switch, okay? It looks like the power button, but it's actually not. It's like the fan, fan control mode, basically, button. All right. So let's go to, um, what should we do first? All right. So I've kind of talked about the keyboard and mouse, but let's talk about the layout of the keyboard and the keyboard feel. This is a membrane plasticky keyboard. 
Um, it feels just fine to type on, especially if you like membrane keyboards. I do overall like the layout. We got pretty close to a full size number pad, which is great to see. Um, you know, and on the, on that number pad, you know, we have pause, play, and power button over here on the top right, and then we also have our normal number pad functions. Functions, and right here is the predator sense button. So this is like launching armory crate if you press that. Um, and I just pressed that and you can see on the display here, um, it went ahead and launched the Predator Sense application. So that's nice. All right, so in terms of uh, other keyboard functionality, everything is backlit here. All the F1 through 12 keys are backlit. I like that. Um, and the keyboard backlight is pretty easy to see even in a fairly bright environment. Uh, and if I turn these lights off, You can see that the keyboard is quite vibrant and um, looks really good, I think, overall. Um, in terms of an overall RGB keyboard implementation, all right? Cool, very nice. Am I planning on getting the Tough A15 with a 4060? Uh, very well might. That's a very likely one that I will be reviewing in the next month or two. So uh, probably not in the near future though. Okay, so um, so yeah, the keyboard feel overall, I, I mean, I give it like a 7.5 or 8 out of 10. It's got a nice, nice layout, nice key feel, not super high premium or anything like that. The keyboard backlight, everything's illuminated at least. Um, it'll work just fine. It'll do the job of the keyboard. The touchpad though, I would only give it like a 6.5 or 7 out of 10. It's just because it's more of a plasticky feel, but it is a larger touchpad. Um, and the click, the click does feel pretty good. A little, a little bit mushy maybe, but not bad. All right, a lot of bloatware. If you haven't noticed there, there was a lot of bloatware that I just had to, to, to say no to. Um, okay, uh, next let's go ahead and check the camera quality. So we have a webcam on this. Let's see if it's any good. All right, um, hmm. It's, 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 uh, it's not awful. That's probably what I would say. That's the way I would describe it. Uh, nice middle ground. I'll go ahead and zoom in for you on some of this. Uh, it's, it's not a super high end camera for sure. Uh, where's the zoom button? There we go. So not great detail on the beard and the hair here. Uh, it'll work to get the, the job done on talking to your grandma and stuff like that. That's also not the most accurate colors, but the colors actually are looking a little better when I'm looking at the screen here than what is being shown in the camera. Um, but yeah, you got a webcam, at least you got a webcam, right? Um, so that's, that's nice. That said, not an amazing webcam. It's all right. No windows. Hello either. Um, all right. How is the screen wobble? Yeah, I was, I was kind of showing you this either. It feels pretty solid. Honestly, the hinge itself feels pretty good. I uh, saw so a little bit of wobble to it, but not bad. I would say it's uh, above average in terms of hinge stiffness. So one of the more stiff hinges, just in general. Um, all right, now let's go ahead and move into our speaker test. All right, so we're gonna do our speaker test and then we're gonna do our fan test as well with the different fan modes. Get that plugged in. All right. So starting out, we have Peter Spacey Roar. Let's get everything positioned correctly here. All right, we have to reposition the camera here. Jam.
trying to get it to focus on the close range here. There we go. Okay. All right. So first up, we have Peter Spacey Roar. And also, let's go ahead and get the default decibels. Should be around 43. Forty-two point eight for our baseline of decibels. All right, and let's go ahead and make sure the volume's turned up to max. We also have. Um, so as I should show you this, and we should do a quick audio test to see what it sounds like with different profiles. Uh, so DTS X is your audio manipulator. Um, software. So if you want to change the uh, speaker profiles, you've got automatic, music, voice, movies, RPG, strategy, shooter. That's interesting that there's three different ones for video games. There's also custom audio. Um, interesting. Bass boost, dialogue clarity, volume smoothing, treble enhance. Interesting. So that's custom audio. Uh, let's try just the music. All right. So we're going to do, we're just going to place Peter Spacey Roar. And we'll listen to it real quick. Okay, we're gonna leave it to automatic. Um, is some of that was just downright weird sounding um, with audio going up and down in weird ways uh, without me even changing stuff. So um, we're gonna leave it to automatic and see how it all sounds. Uh, yeah, and I gotta say I'm not that impressed with the initial impressions of the speakers. Let's get all three songs listened to though and I'll give you my thoughts. All right, so. Um, there we go. And here we go. It does not sound very good. The bass, the clarity, it all sounds a bit muddled. It's not that loud of volume. Um, it's several decibels lower than what some of the other laptops uh, have done for Peter Spacey Roar. Let's do Faded A on Half-Life and see what it sounds like. Okay, so um, not terrible mid clarity and high clarity, but the volume wasn't very loud. Um, let's do Deuce Williams, la la la, love you like. Okay, so these speakers are not particularly loud. The bass is pretty muddled and mediocre. Um, and the mids and highs are not that clear. 
But at least with Faded A on Half Life, it was um, decent ish for when there was just mids going on. Um, okay, so there you go. Speakers on this, I would give like. 5.5 or 6 out of 10. Probably one of the worst speakers I've tested in a gaming laptop this year so far. A lot of gaming laptops have been working hard on improving their speaker quality. Uh, apparently Acer has forgot about their speakers though, unfortunately. Okay. Um, now we are going to do a fan noise test and see how loud these fans can get. All right, so we're gonna load up 3D Mark and we're gonna run 3D Mark in a loop in the background. And then we're going to see how loud the fans can get. Okay, uh, Kowalski says, uh, is it worth the Acer 5 12500H, 16 gigs, RTX 4060, I'll use an external monitor, left cost 1200 euros in my country. That's a that's a pretty high price overall for an Acer Nitro with a 4060 um, Kowalski, but that's also, I don't know what country it is and how much of a markup you have in your market, but a 4060 for 1,200 euros is not terrible. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a great deal either though. So you'll have to decide the value versus um, the other competition, you know, that's in your that's in your market, you know, so, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, run custom. So we're gonna run this 3D Mark loop in the background. And do, 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 cool, cool, cool. All right, so Predator Sense. All right, so uh, let's go over the Predator Sense app real quick, and you can get an idea of how you change the fan profiles and what they look like. All right, so here is the Predator Sense application. Um, we'll go ahead and turn off the backlight behind me here. There we go. All right, so if we go to scenario, so home is just like this GPU information, temperatures information. Scenario is set to quiet, balanced, performance, and turbo, or can be set to those four. Right now we're set to quiet. Um, we are gonna, I guess we could start in quiet, that's fine. Um, and I do want to have this going. There we go, let's do 16, cool. All right, uh, so there is Time Spy running in the background right now already. And we are in quiet mode, all right? So quiet mode, wow. Quiet mode is doing quite well, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and get, so you can see that quiet mode is doing 80 watts of power, 70 degrees on the GPU right now. 63 on the CPU with 16, 15 watts of power to that CPU. So what that means is we have a good amount of wattage, plus our GPU is running at 2520. So our GPU is close to like the peak, uh, peak boost clocks for the stock clocks without any overclocking. Um, and it's able to run this whole thing while at the same time not overheating and I cannot hear the fans right now at all. We're gonna go ahead and see if there's any increase with the decibel meter, but I don't think there will be in quiet mode. So that is already very impressive, thermally speaking. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And we'll go ahead and try to get this focus over here. There we go. All right, and for a moment, I'm gonna turn down the fans on my external fan here. All right. We'll quiet down now. Let's 
Yeah, I do not hear these fans at all. Um, very impressive thermals for this Neo 16. Oh, I hear the fans kicking up a little bit now. So it's boosting our decibels above 41.5 up to like 42 to 43 decibels um, in quiet mode. Very quiet fans overall. Very nice. Um, good job, Acer. You did a great job, at least on your quiet fans. Let's move to balanced mode and see how everything, all the boosts, clocks, and wattages, see if that changes at all. All right, so we are now doing uh, 95, 93 watts. 92 watts right here. Um, so over 90 watts, we've bumped our watts and our clock speed is still staying above 2500. Really didn't change much in terms of actual clock speed. I can hear the fans ramping up quite a bit more now. But realistically, they're not even getting that loud here in boost mode. Um, so that is great to see. And our temperatures have also remained um, right in line in the mid 70s, mid 60s for the CPU. Really fantastic temperatures right now. Um, let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and check the decibel meter now that we've got it run, been running for a little while. So balanced mode hitting 46 and a half, 47 decibels. Very nice overall balance of fan noise and temperatures and performance. Uh, let's move to performance mode. Oops, I canceled the time spy thing. We've got to relaunch this. So we're going to move into performance mode and we're going to see how loud it gets in performance mode. Uh, Predator Sense is better than Alienware Command Center. I would agree. Um, at least Predator Sense is pretty lightweight. It loads instantly and so far has had zero bugs for me. Um, so that's obviously better already. Um, Brian says, after watching your videos, got the M18R1, got the machine with 64 gigs of RAM, 4090, 4TB by M.2. Thanks for your advice on, on it. Cool, man. Thanks for, um, I hope you, hope you enjoy it. Even though the Alienware M18 was one of the laptops I wasn't recommending as much as some of the other ones, but... Um, it's obviously not, uh, if you're willing to deal with Alienware Command Center, I think it's not a terrible choice. All right, so um, we need to let this run for you know at least a minute to try to let the fans acclimate to the new workload. Um, one thing I am noticing right now, and we're gonna zoom in a little bit. Notice the CPU is really cranking a lot more wattage, 33, 28, 29 watts to the CPU. That's boosting our CPU performance levels, but at the same time, it's also raising our temperatures on the CPU and it's making the whole overall system fans uh, run a little bit, you know, heavier, noisier. So performance mode basically is allowing that CPU to run at a higher level, which is gonna be very useful in a lot of games, um, but it's interesting, it's interesting to see. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our decimal meter. The fans have ramped up a bit more. So, 49.3 decibels, so not quite 50 decibels, even in performance mode. Let's switch it into turbo mode. All right, turbo mode has been engaged. Let's see the performance 
difference first so we are now doing 2655 on the GPU clock so it by it automatically overclocked the GPU by about 120 um, clock speed on the core um, and looks like 200 on the video memory as well so now we're doing 8201 on the video memory so that's definitely going to help performance at least a little bit a few percentage points um, notice that uh, our CPU is still doing the 30 watts so the primary difference I'm seeing between turbo fan and performance fans is just that it comes with an overclock. Basically, the GPU is then overclocked, and the fans are also louder. I think our, our GPU temperature has gone down a little bit. We were doing like 75, I think. Now we're in the low 70s. So the overall wattage really hasn't gone up because the RTX 4050 doesn't really need much more than 90, 95 watts. So it makes sense, but um, this is turbo mode right now is basically just applying an overclock. And at the same time, it is um, basically lowering our temperatures by increasing the fan noise. But our temperatures were not that bad to begin with. So honestly, honestly, if this was my system, I'd probably run it in like balance mode or, or uh, quiet mode probably. Because um, it's really not going to make hardly any difference. Except the fan noise will be louder in turbo mode. Um, that's really the main difference you're going to run into. So um, let's go ahead and do a fan noise test now with the decibel meter. Fifty three point eight decibels for our uh, audio on the turbo fan mode. Let's see here. Is there a max fan option? Fan control. Fan control. We're going to set to max. Are you ready? Sixty-three, sixty-four decibels on max fans is extraordinarily loud um, for a laptop. Uh, <laughs> that is almost as loud as the GT seventy-seven from MSI, uh, but it's in a you know this is in a much smaller laptop chassis size, so it's impressive that they can get this loud and move this much air. Let's check out the thermals now that we're on max fans, because that you know if you're going to run the fans that loud, you better you better hope that the, the thermals are awesome, all right? So, and yeah, they are. Look at that, 64 degrees now on the GPU, 63 degrees, 57 on the CPU. So just like literally like, these are like desktop level temperatures now, um, but in the laptop form factor, which is just awesome to see. I do love that. So if you're gonna play with headphones, um, you could choose to run your fans at this level but it's kind of overkill and honestly it's going to wear your fans out faster for no reason you know if those do break you have to replace them so i would probably just keep generally keep them on like performance or balanced mode uh, maybe even quiet mode if you're as long as you're getting enough performance in quiet mode then why switch it out you know quiet mode still had uh, like 70 watts of um and then you have a really quiet system as long as the performance is still good enough then there's no point and going to the fans being ramped this crazily. But uh, but yeah, this is how I test laptops. So this is how we're going to test it today. Um, so, awesome. Let's move into our display test. Now that we've done um, checking out our overview here. We've done speaker tests, fan noise testing, 
keyboard, mouse, webcam, all of that. Now we need to do our display, nits, gamut, and contrast. Um, and then we can move into our benchmarks and game testing. Exciting. Those are That's my favorite part is honestly all of that. Um, so really looking forward to that. Let's go ahead and get into our display test next. What did you guys think of the, uh, the thermals and fan noise of this laptop? I got to say, I am super impressed. Uh, like, wow. It is, I think, I think it's uh, one of the coolest running RTX 4050s we've seen, especially when you have max fans enabled. All right, I need to uh, sign in real quick. It's quieter in turbo mode compared to the Titan. Um, maybe by a little bit. The Titan is just absurdly loud. It has four fans. Um, this is, you know, the Titan's definitely over 60 decibels. And this is definitely also over 60. So it's in the same ballpark, though, as the Titan in terms of uh, overall fan noise. And on, honestly, the temperatures too, the accompanying temperatures were very impressive on this system. So I, at least I found myself very impressed with the thermals of this laptop um, and the fan noise when you're in the ba more balanced mode. Like, like I said, I, if I was using this laptop, I would like, there's not too much point trying to push the wattage too high. So why would you? You just run it in quiet or balance mode and you're gonna still get like 80, 90 watts to the GPU. Uh, and it's gonna be basically the same performance as the turbo mode. You could even overclock it still in like balanced mode and you're gonna get like the same all around performance. So um, as, as turbo mode, you just gotta do the overclocking manually. Cause when you're in turbo fan profile, you know, Acer is doing the overclocking for you as part of the uh, software control, which if, you know, if you're if you a bit of a laptop, you're newer to laptops or whatever, that might be nice that they do that. So um, we're gonna have to see how good of quality this 16 by 10, so it's a 1920 by 1200 resolution display. Um, very curious to see how, how much, uh, color gamut this has and, and nits brightness. So we'll see. Uh, Big Jazzy says, hoping for a Blade 14 4070 review. I have messaged Razer and I've asked them to send me one. Um, and they said they haven't got their review units in yet, but I think they're considering sending me one. They didn't confirm that they will, but it made it sound like they were interested potentially, which is good. Okay, so. We are set to zero nits brightness. How much is this laptop again? Um, this laptop is, this laptop is uh, $1,200 or 1199. Uh, the thing is, I probably would not, rec like I said, when I was reviewing the, the value comparison, I would wait for it to go on sale. Um, it almost for sure will go on sale to at least $1,100 or maybe $999 at some point here in the next few months. Um, and that's when I would buy it. But if you're obviously in a rush, you could just buy it at the full price. Um, if this is the laptop you definitely want to have. Um, and so far, it's measuring up to be a pretty decent laptop as long as you don't care about speaker quality. Um, like a solid all-around choice. We'll have to see what the display quality actually gets... Uh, you know, how much this display is actually gets rated for. So we'll have to see. Um, Brian says, one small question. Do I need a cooling pad or are they overrated? I didn't find any information on it. Uh, do I really need one? You don't have to have one. No, I don't usually use cooling pads, um, but you could. It's totally fine if you want to. Wow, this screen gets brighter than I thought. Um, so right now we're at the full brightness. Uh, levels and I'm thinking 
I'm thinking this is going to get to that 400 nits range because kind of hurting my eyes a little bit looking at it. Um, okay, so. There we go. All right, so we got... Uh, Ninety-eight of the sRGB color gamuts, seventy-eight and eighty percent of the P3 color gamuts. Um, this does tend to underestimate. Uh, my tool tends to underestimate Adobe and P3 color gamut around seven, eight percent. So this is probably around like uh, mid to high eighties for Adobe and P3 color gamut, which is really good actually um, for a display around this price point. Um, under brightness and contrast, three hundred and ninety-one nits. That's phenomenal. Um, our contrast is really not that good though at 960 to one. Um, that's only about average in terms of contrast, but for brightness, this is far above average for your brightness in laptops around the thousand dollar mark. Um, so the display quality of this Neo 16 is certainly above average. Um, among the budget systems. A lot of the, even some of the more expensive systems for like from MSI, like the Katana 15, is only like a 250 nit display or something, you know? So it's, um, and lower color gamut too. So you got a good amount of color gamut here and that's gonna make gaming and video editing and Photoshop editing and all that stuff um, uh, quite good. And then the brightness will also make it so you can easily see your content even in brighter environments, also very good. Um, I love to see it. Okay, cool. So we are ready to move into our performance testing. Just to verify, all everything is done going up to this. Yes. All right, time to do uh, Cinemage R23 and Time Spy. So Cinemage R23 and Process Lasso. Oh, it is open already. Okay, well, I'm going to get two Cinemage R23s open, probably. Um, we'll just start this. So I use Process Lasso. I don't recommend other people to necessarily use it. Um, I just use it in my benchmarking. Like, you can use Process Lasso to boost your benchmark performance just by a little bit. Um, but I use it to make sure that nothing... Um, interrupts the benchmark in the background. Um, so basically it sets Process Lasso to, uh, or sets, my, sets Cinebench to be like the top priority of the system to ensure that I have fair results across all the laptops that I test. Because sometimes you might have something like Windows Update going in the background or something that you don't realize is going on or whatever. Um, and as far as I know, that's not the case, but you know, in, this, in this, these situations, but using process list so mitigates if it were to actually happen. Okay, we're gonna go back to max fans. We're gonna go back to turbo mode. Turbo fans, turbo and max fans are engaged. Um, all right, so here is, what is the processor in this? Wow. So this Intel Core i5 comes with six P cores and Eight E cores? Yeah. Wow. I didn't think an I5 came with that many P cores and E cores because that's more E core, P core combos than some of the I7s out there. So very nice. It's because, it, you know, it's because it's an I5 HX. That's why. Um, since it's the 13500 HX processor, you get the additional E cores. Um, Cause I believe the non X version only has like four E cores or something. So you get the additional E cores with the HX version. All right, so we're gonna need to, uh, we're gonna need to go and I just wanna make sure that none of these downloads are coming. 
going on in the background. So Dying Light 2 is currently doing an update. You can see our Wi-Fi speed was doing 60 megabytes a second, which is not bad, but I've seen some of the other Wi-Fi um, out there inside of this room doing 80 to 90 megabytes a second. So uh, it's not the fastest Wi-Fi. It's the killer, uh, was it killer 1650 or something like that? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just kill Steam in the background. That way it doesn't run anything in the background, all right? And then we're gonna pull up HW info and we're gonna do a one-off test. Let's go ahead and do our test. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in here and check out all of our power and performance levels. So we're getting 4.2 gigahertz on all of the P cores, 3.5 on the e cores, that is excellent. Um, very impressive initial core loads. Taking a look at our wattage, whoa, 143 watts coming through the CPU, and our temperatures are still staying in check at 87 degrees. That is impressive. Also, very high levels of wattage for an initial run. Wow. For an i5 in a laptop, doing 143 watts is insane. 17,666. Oh boy, we got the, the number of the devil here. Um, okay, uh, just kidding. <laughs> Ibrahim Akaldi said, would consider newer games like Layers of Fear. It is an un... Unreal Engine 5 game. Layers of Fear. Interesting. Not heard of that game. Oh, yeah. Okay. What's up, Snowball? <laughs> I believe is this is this Oscar? Is this Snowball the video editor? Uh, he helps video edit the vlogs. So 15,498. We must be losing wattage. Let's take a look at our watts. We are down to 76 watts right now. 137 again. It jumped up. But I don't think it's going to sustain it, is it? 121. One hundred watts right now. So, uh, awesome. This is impressive, actually. The amount of wattage that this processor is pulling through the CPU is is very impressive. Why is the P core is only down to two point four gigahertz? The E cores are doing three point five. How does that make sense? I do not know. I wonder if that's an error. Usually P cores should be higher wattage than the E cores. 14,202. Weird. The P cores have come up now in, in terms of clock speeds. That was very odd behavior, having the P cores drop like that. I wonder if that has to do with the i5 or what. Could also be HW Info just showing me the wrong data, but it was showing all the cores doing the same thing. That's weird. Okay, let's do a 10 minute test and see what we get. Cause the 10 minute tests will really tell us our thermal throttle score, you know, um, better than doing these one offs. So P cores are doing over four gigahertz on average right now at the start. We're doing 140 watts. We're gonna go ahead and reset our clocks. We're gonna get our average wattage and average clock speeds across the total 10 minutes here. Um, and we're gonna see what our CPU performance is gonna be like. All right. Ibram says, that fan is flying. Yes, it is. This is one of the louder laptops. We're on Max fans. It doesn't really even need Max fans, quite frankly, but 
Um, I suppose in this situation, it actually might, because, uh, I mean, you know, this much wattage going through the CPU, 142 watts. It would it would make this system be very hot if we didn't have fat max fans going. Look at our, our CPU temperatures, 71, 60. It's like right now averaging 72 degrees, averaging 79. Uh, looks like we're... We're, we're power limit throttling down to 99 watts of power on the CPU package. So that's a good amount of wattage for an i5, like a very high amount of wattage. But uh, I don't see why we need to thermal throttle that low. Like, why can't we thermal throttle? Um, uh, I don't know why we can't power limit throttle a bit higher than that. And, you know, it may be possible to actually get this guy to go higher on the power uh, yeah, look at our peak cores. Our peak cores are dropping to 2.4 gigahertz. Um, I wonder if we could raise that power limit, we'd be able to really boost the performance levels of the CPU. I bet we could. I'll bet you we could get it to do the 140 watts continuously nonstop in Intel XCU because this is an HX processor. We might even be able to undervolt this sucker. But we're not going to take the time to do that today. Uh, I it, Just know that it's a possibility that very well may help boost performance of this laptop. Oh, yes. Ooh. Man, the temperatures on this machine are awesome. The one odd behavior is these P-cores behaving oddly. Other than that, things are looking really good. Yeah, that is so weird. The E-cores are a higher clock speed than the P-cores. Makes no sense. So interesting. Hmm. Nice RGB festival behind me. Yeah, I don't even have the RGB lights up here on anymore because it reflections off the screen. But, um, but yeah, so six minutes left. I'm going to go grab a drink and I'll be right back. Feel free to ask any questions in chat and I will... I'll try to answer them. Uh, Sam asks, are you actually in your bus? I believe you mean like my Airstream. Uh, right now, I'm not in my Airstream. I am in my house. So. How are things shaping up? Let's check it out. Mm. 
Looks like 2.4 gigahertz on the P cores still, 3.5 gigahertz on the E cores. Temperatures are phenomenal, 67 for the core, 71 for the package, 99 watts of power, peak 142 watts of power. Very nice. All right, well, I can go ahead and get the Spider 5 Elite put up. We can get everything else repositioned and get ready for all of our gaming benchmarks. So we need to re reposition the laptop for that. All right, beautiful, beautiful. So when I was at CES, MSI gave me this thermos. Uh, thermos? Thermos? I don't know. Thermos, I think is how you say it. Um, and yeah, I... <laughs> let me show you this. I don't know if you're supposed to drink out of it like this, but it basically drizzles, drizzles all over my beard. It, yeah, doesn't work very well. Wait, are you supposed to put it into like this? And then drink out of the cup? I don't know. I'm probably not gonna drink out of it like this though, obviously, because it's going all over my beard. <laughs> All right, speaking of CPU tuning, I have seen some extreme tuning guides adjusting ACLL, etc., from the Chinese YouTuber channel. It's so advanced, I don't think I wanted to do it even now, even though. Um, yeah, I mean, in general, I don't know that it'd be really worth doing um, on a laptop CPU. Maybe if you want to try to push the most extreme performance or something, I don't know. But uh, generally, the performance gains you get from overclocking... Uh, like detailed extreme overclocking usually are not more than 10%, which can be a lot of hassle for not too many gains. Whereas undervolting, oftentimes it's like a thing that you set and forget and then you don't have to worry about it and you just get your five to 10% gains with very little effort, you know? So that's why I'm a big fan of undervolting in general. And the process really isn't very complicated. So where uh, many people can do it, you know. Okay. We're down to the last 40 seconds. Our CPU package has averaged 71 degrees. Core temperature, 67 degrees. Our P cores have averaged 2.4 gigahertz. Our E cores are doing 3.5 gigahertz. Overall package power, 99 watts. Average is 101, peak one, 142 for the initial uh, minute, minute and a half. Went up to like that 144 uh, range. And very impressive peak performance at the start. I wish it could sustain it over the long haul. And maybe it could if you set uh, it correctly up in an Intel XDU. Um, I think it's very likely the case. Let's go ahead and see what we get. For our actual performance numbers, I'm guessing it's going to be 14 to 15,000, um, just because all the P cores dropping so low over the the majority of the test uh, is going to hurt our performance. Where if we could get those up, um, you're doing the full 140 watts the whole time, you know, I think we would probably be looking at closer to 17, 18,000, maybe a little more. Um, so 13. 1,987 for our 10-minute throttle test. Um, overall, that's a pretty good score. 
That's a pretty good score for an i5 processor. I wish, uh, I wish we could raise the power limits or have time to raise the power limits and test that out, but um, just not worth it. But if you do end up getting this laptop, I would encourage you, if you want to push for more performance, use Intel XDU, try to raise the power limit and undervolt it if you can. Um, if you can do that, you'll see a noticeable increase in overall performance. So let's go ahead and get Steam opened and let's get into our game testing. I'm really excited. We've got a lot of games to test uh, and we got, we're gonna start off with uh, Time Spy, which is a benchmarking tool. Um, and then we're gonna move in straight into our game testing. Has anyone else tried Bro Tato? Bro Tato? I'm not sure how to how to say it. I've been playing the crap out of that game lately. Um, like I've been playing so much of it, uh, and it's a lot of fun. I, I've really, I've. I'm on like level three out of five in terms of prestige levels or whatever and trying the different versions of the game. It's a unique and interesting challenge that I got to say is is very fun. Do I play Doom Eternal? I have not. Um, is Doom Eternal like a similar idea that you like get upgrades and try to last as long as you can? It's Doom Eternal is one of the games I've been wanting to play though, being honest. Um, just haven't. Haven't had time, not enough time in the world to play all the games I want to play. It's a fast-paced game, faster than Apex. Well, Apex goes up and down in terms of pacing, depending on who's attacking you or what, what's going on in the system. So, But yeah, lots of customization. Cool. Well, I mean, I'll, it's Doom Eternal is a game I plan on checking out at some point. Um, obviously, it's an epic, legendary game overall, and it should run really well on the ROG Ally. And uh, yeah, I've been playing the Ally every day for probably an hour a day at least. Usually, I've been taking it to the gym, honestly, and using it on the elliptical, and uh, burning calories and just playing games like The Witcher Three or um, Brotato, Brotato. I'm not sure how to how to say it, Brotato. Uh, but it's it's been fun and it's been great. Just wish the battery life was a little longer because like today in the gym ran out. Um, but that's probably my main complaint about it is just the battery life not being amazing. So here we go. We are in turbo fan mode. We should have a small overclock applied. Um, and there you can see it. We are doing 2670 for our GPU boost clock. Our temperatures are freezing at 54 degrees on the GPU, 41 degrees on the CPU. It is um, absurdly good temps on this laptop at least uh well i mean it's obviously should heat up a little bit as we go through this test but even considering that we've been in this test for a little uh you know 30 seconds now or whatever those temps are phenomenal um and i don't see them pro likely going over 65 degrees on the cpu or the gpu probably during the whole test um, maybe the cpu will go hotter when it goes to the cpu only test section but still just ice 
cold temps. Whew, love to see it. Have, uh, has anyone tried Battle Bit Remastered? Um, it's like this new 256 person shooter game, but like very basic graphics. Uh, I have not actually got to play it yet, but it's a game that I've been um, meaning to play, meaning to try out. So we're at 2670 right now. It is, I mean, our wattage is basically right around 90 watts of usage. Um, you know, when we were running this in a loop, it was actually using the GPU a little bit higher a little bit higher gpu wattage utilization um and now we're only doing 90 watts I, i'm pretty sure this thing would go to a higher wattage level if it needed to but we're we're maxing that boost clock at 2670 with the default turbo oc on this rtx 4050 and it is just cruising it's doing no problems keeping the temperatures at under 60 degrees, 58 degrees right now on the GPU, 49 on the CPU, 50 on the CPU. Absolutely phenomenal thermals. Obviously, very loud fans right now in max fan mode, though. So, yeah. Now we got the CPU test. Wow, CPU test is killing it at 70 frames there um, for a little while there. Doing really good on the CPU test for an i5 processor. Okay, so 8,935 for our graphics score. That is really good for an RTX 4050. Uh, right up there with the best of them for all the RTX 4050s. It's going right around 9,000. Might be able to push over 9,000 with an overclock. 14,456 is really, really good for an i5 CPU. That's amazing, actually. Uh, Thaddeus wants to know, did you review the 2022 Helios Predator 300? Seeing it for sale and wondering if it's a good laptop. Um, it is a pretty good laptop, and if you get the right, uh, if you get the right setup on it, it may be worth buying. So, um, so yeah, okay, beautiful. Let's move into our game testing now. We've got a couple updates to do. Um, looks like Apex Legends Dying Light Two has a couple updates. Um, so going, showing you real quick our game tests we've got apex legends warzone 2 counter-strike god of war cyberpunk 2077 hogwarts dead space last of us dying light 2 shadow of the tomb raider witcher 3 and then we're going to summarize everything we found out about the laptop so that's our game plan that we still have yet for the live stream we're about halfway done um and we're entering my favorite part the game testing part where we get to see how much performance you get um in reality right so Steam trying to do some updates here on Apex Legends and going really, really slow for some reason. 1.2 megabytes a second. I, I don't know why. I'm going to switch back to Dying Light 2. Maybe it needs to finish that or something. I don't know. That was really weird. Okay, so Dying Light 2 should take less than a minute to finish. And um, yeah, so uh, Thaddeus, we were, I was going over a bunch of the competitor laptops, right? That, that you could consider buying instead of this one um, at the beginning. And uh, right now, if, you, if you're interested in the best bang for the buck overall, 
I would say check out my top deals section of my gaming laptop list. There's a link down below. Um, and look at this Acer Nitro 5. Uh, sorry. It's Acer Nitro 5 with a 3070 Ti. All right. Comes with a QHD display. Um, Ryzen 7 6800H. QHD 165 Hz, 300 nits, P3, 100% P3 color gamut. Right now, this is probably the best option for your money. But, uh, and I did do a review of this, or at least an unboxing of the 3050 Ti version. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a good budget system. And for the money, the specs you're getting there is insane. Absolutely insane. So um, it's the kind of thing that if you're after the most performance per dollar it's hard to compete with that one right now but that sale is only going to be on going on uh very temporarily i believe it ends in seven hours and uh so if you want that sale you have to snap it up well yet well it's available all right so we are waiting for this apex legends update to be done because that is the first game that we're trying to test we do need to go in here and do max plus uh, I believe that's it. Um, how does this one compare to the Strix G16 you tested earlier price-wise? So the, the Strix G16 um, I also compared it against that one. Um, let's see here. So the Strix G16 is currently on sale for $13.29. So uh, this Neo 16 costs $129 less, but it doesn't have a 4060, and it doesn't have an i7 processor. It has an i5. So very similar, though, in terms of processing power and performance. Um, Though notice this one got 20,000 on the Cinebench, where this laptop only got 14, and that's because of the power limit throttling. Um, and for GPU performance, this gets 1060 for GPU on TimeSpy, um, which is quite a bit better, even better for a per dollar ratio than the Neo 16, because the Neo 16 is 1199. Uh, and like I said, I would probably wait for this thing to go on sale for $1,100 or maybe 999, and then it would be an excellent buy. At $1,199, the main advantage this one has is that it's a 400 nits display, 165 hertz, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, um, definitely a higher quality display than the average in this category. So, um, but yeah, I would say in general, a good idea to wait for a sale. Okay, looks like Apex Legends is done. Let's go ahead and launch that. This or the SCAR 16? I mean, SCAR 16 is a whole nother class of pricing. Costs like $2,800, $2,900 for a 4080. Um, you know, the SCAR 16 is very expensive. Do you mean the Strix G16? Um, you have to let me know which, which one you mean. Okay. So this laptop does come with um, advanced Optimus, allowing you to switch your GPU, CPU on the fly, which is good. Um, not all the laptops this year come with that. A lot of the MSI laptops, for example, do not come with that. Going into our settings here, right now we're triple buffered. We're gonna just take that off. We are set to high settings. Let's go into our firing range. Um, WTD Life, can I ask something about other laptops? Which one do you prefer, the GE78 or the Alienware M16? Um, I would get the GE78 between those two. But I'd have to actually see the pricing and everything too, you know? Okay, so right now we are on 
high settings, doing 138 FPS. It's feeling really good. Auto sprint on. Sensitivity sent down to one. All right, so let's go ahead and test out. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and restart the benchmark meter there. But you can see our 1% low right now is uh, 99, 100 FPS. I gotta say, I can tell this is not super fluid um, in terms of like the way it looks to my eyes. Um, and I would say that's probably because we have all these settings on high. Let's go ahead and set everything to low. You know, our 1% low is, was only around like 100 FPS. Let's go ahead and reset it now. Now our 1% low, we're averaging 202, 140 two for our 1% low. So our 1% low just came up a lot. I'm seeing some screen tearing. Um, it's almost like so right now we're set right here you can see we have advanced Optimus all right we're set to Nvidia GPU only mode Optimus will switch it in hybrid mode set of G-Sync G-Sync is enabled enabled for full screen mode only or enable for window and full screen mode. So we just gotta make sure if we wanna use G-Sync, we are in full screen mode. I don't know, I think. I think this display just has a little bit of ghosting to it. You can kind of see it in the stream, right, chat? Um, like, when I turn the camera, you can see it, how the, the image kind of warps a little bit over the other image. I don't know why, it just feels, it doesn't feel awful, awful. Like, I could definitely play esports games with this screen but it feels like there's just a slight bit of ghosting going on with this display. I wonder if there's any kind of like overdrive mode or something like that. LCD overdrive. Okay, so I just enabled LCD overdrive. Maybe that will help with our refresh rate. I think that did help a bit with the, uh, yeah, that, that helped remove a little bit of the ghosting, just a tiny bit. Um, so over, overall, I mean, you could definitely play eSports with this, but I, this is not my top pick in terms of eSports displays because it's just got a slight bit of ghosting to it. Um, okay. All right, let's go into a gun run and we'll see if we can get a few kills. 
Um, D1 says, how's the fan noise so far? Because it sounds loud. So the fan noise on this is only loud because we're in manually activated uh, with max fans. If you just set this to turbo mode or honestly performance mode or balanced mode or quiet mode, you're going to get almost the same levels of performance in all the different modes. Um, obviously, quiet mode will be the lowest levels of performance where you might notice a little bit, but you go to balance mode, the fan noise is extremely minimal and... I'm very impressed with the fan noise and the thermals overall with this. But in max fan mode, the fans are very loud, like very loud fans in max fan mode. Um, but look at our temps right now, 43 degrees, 41 degrees. These are like desktop level temps um, because we're in max fan mode. So it's up to you whether you want to have the lower temps or louder fans. Um, you get to choose. Okay, so starting server, we're gonna be able to get into the game here. Wow, it's doing 299 FPS right now. Just, that is pretty insane. Oh, he picked Pathfinder. Uh, I guess we'll go Gibraltar. Time for some Gibby. What's up, Steven? Uh, you say, was this again? What do you mean? All right. If you're asking what this is, we are testing this laptop, seeing how good it is. All right, so the speakers are Speakers are currently at max. Wow. Okay, this feels a lot better, honestly, than the firing range. Oh, so close to killing that guy. This is feeling really good now that I'm actually in a match. It's amazing the FPS on this is actually much higher than what it was. We know we got someone right here. Come on out. I should probably go help my teammates. Oh no, we got shot from behind. Um, so we're averaging 222 FPS so far. 132 for our 1% low is phenomenal. I have done so much damage, I can't get a kill. Dang, I should have went and punched him. 609 damage for one kill. That's rough. 
guess it's because I'm not like getting in their faces. I'm kind of poking at people from a distance. The guy who mows and beaked me. Uh, the temps are impressive. Yeah, the temps are really good on this laptop when you have it in max fan mode. It's um, honestly, it's overkill. I'd probably not run them in max fan mode. I would run them in like, uh, like balanced mode probably. You know, the speakers on this for actually playing games aren't too bad. We're doing the murder now. So we got four kills, 1200 damage, leading our team in damage. Not quite the whole server. I think someone else got probably more damage than me now. Oh, death from above. Oh, wow. That guy annihilated me with a peacekeeper. That guy has the most kills and damage, too. Who the heck is shooting me? I missed like all of my shots. <laughs> okay. Um, very nice overall. This is this is running really great. We averaged 220 FPS in Apex Legends. Um, and I feel like it honestly was better than I it's better it was better in the match than it was in the shooting range like the shooting range got lower fps and i don't know still i would say just a tiny bit of tiny bit of ghosting not the fastest response rate display that i've tested um all right so we're going into modern warfare 2 let's see what kind of fps we can get in warzone battle royale i'm hoping really good because I think the i5 processor may actually handle Warzone 2 better than most i5s, or maybe even some of the i7s. We'll see. Um, if the Asus G16, Pulse 15, the Lenovo Pro 5, and this laptop are all the same price, which one you choose? Um, it depends on the display and what GPU is on the inside. Right now, this Neo... Is charging a little bit more for the Neo 16. Um, 
than the other uh, laptops. So, but it, I, I think this one, I think it says it just came out. Um, I think the price will come down on a sale eventually here. Uh, so between those two, I think I would probably either go, depends on what you need. If you're a video editor and you need the highest quality display, the MSI Pulse 15 has a 100% DCPI3 color gamut display, the best quality display out of those four laptops. Uh, so if you're a graphic designer or video editor, I'd probably go with the Pulse 15. If you're a gamer and you want the most performance and best temps, the Strix G16 is probably the route I would go because I like the build quality design and all of that for that laptop the most out of those four laptops. But the Legion... Pro 5 is also really good. So. Uh, so. Battle Royale quads. I guess is what I have to do because... Yeah. Also, let's just make sure that our settings are correct. I think I already set these, but um, let's just go ahead and double check them. Graphic settings, full screen exclusive, 165 hertz, 1920 by 1200. All that's correct. DLSS is on quality. Texture is set to high. Everything else is set to low. Everything's good. Okay. Also, um, I have already done the shaders for the Warzone 2, so we'll see. I guess this this G16 too, because build quality just looks phenomenal. Yeah, I just I love this Strix G16 overall, because um, it's got better quality speakers, great RGB implementation, um, really good thermals. Um, but at the same time, you know, between all of these, I'm at this price point. I really love Windows Hello, so I, I'm, I may even consider jumping, jumping over to the Zephyrus G16 if it, was, um, if it was an option. I also really love the keyboard on the Legion Pro 5, so there's that. It's probably the best keyboard between all of those laptops. Great layout, too. I don't know. I've tested all those laptops this year, uh, and it would be tough choosing, quite frankly, between them. Um, it would come down to individual pricing and what specs each one came with. Because um, they're not all priced the same for the same specs. Um, they're just all in a similar ballpark. But yeah, in terms of which one I would probably pick, the RGB implementation on the Strix G16 definitely sets it apart. The portability on the Zephyrus G16 and Windows Hello sets that one apart. Um, and the speaker quality on the Asus laptops just in general is better. So the Legion Pro 5 speaker quality was not too bad, I don't think. I don't know. Let's see what we get in Warzone here. I'm hoping we get at least 90 FPS. If we can get 90 FPS, I will be super happy. What's up, Christian? Welcome to the stream. All right. So anyone that's just hopping into the stream, please feel free to ask any questions about this laptop or similar laptops. Okay, so here we are. We are at 93 FPS. Enemy soldier. Very smooth feeling performance here so far. So, um... All things considered, we're getting very good performance. <laughs> there we are. Gizmos the test.
I hope we don't jump as a team. I mean, I feel bad doing this, but I gotta gotta do my test. Very nice. It looks like I had some teammates come to the same area as me, at least. Okay, we're gonna uh, do that one more time. Okay, so we're doing 85 FPS in across the bridge. 53 for our 1% low. This is uh, this is impressive for an RTX 4050 laptop. Doing really, really well. I like it. I like it. Sweet, we got a good gun. Two of my two of my teammates have died already. Wonder where they died. Oh, he's up there. Well, whatever. Your squad mate has entered the gulag. Surviving your deployment. Your squad mate was sent to the gulag. Oh, my teammates are dead. Oh man. This is very smooth feeling. They are no longer with us. And they lost in the gulag. LOL. I thought I was going to be the first one to leave, and it turns out that is not the case. Your squad is requesting recon at this time. Oh, crap. We got a kill, but. Wow, Recon revealed there was like five people <laughs> around me. <laughs> okay, well, we got a kill before we uh, died. That's nice. Temps are phenomenal. Come here. Overall, this is a great gaming experience. Rip Gizmo Squad. Gulag time. Ooh, just his head popped out. He got me. Okay. Good job, good job, good game, sir, good game. Okay, so 94 FPS, 51 for a 1% low. Very playable, good experience in Warzone 2. Um, I'm actually very impressed. It's uh, a little bit better than I thought we were going to get in terms of performance coming out of the RTX 4050 and an i5 CPU, right? Like, I mean, most i5s I would expect closer to like 70 or 65, 60 to 80 FPS is what I was thinking we were going to get, but... Going into the 90s, um, even into the hundreds, depending on the area and what map, uh, part of the map we're in, um, I think is very realistic and likely likely achievable. Um, D1 says, this, this laptop looks like it might outperform some 4060 laptops. Uh, that is going to be the case for, um, that is going to be the case for a lot of gaming laptops, such as, uh, sorry. Warzone 2 is a very CPU-bound game, so the gaming laptops out there that have a poorer, poorer CPU cooling system or they don't let the CPU run very high, you're just going to get better performance in a game like Warzone 2 out of, out of this laptop because this laptop definitely lets that CPU just run. 
and go to a higher wattage level. Okay. Um, time to check out the benchmark, and then we're going to, uh, and then we're going to go out into a match in Dust Two. All right, so here we are, CSGO benchmark, 300 to 400 FPS right now. Very nice. Bouncing between, yeah, bouncing mainly between 300 to 400. Now we're in the 300s mainly. We do have smoke on the screen right now. Time for the smoke test. We're gonna see how low of FPS we get inside the smoke. Um, down to 68 FPS, I believe, was, the, was about as low as it got. The mid 60s, maybe. Um, that is pretty good. We have seen some Laptops out there, they that choke all the way down to like the 40s or 50s. So seeing in the high 60s is very nice. Um, again, looks like it was like the 60s in the center of the smoke. Dip into 400 to 500 FPS range on average. Excellent performance so far in CSGO. What's up, Leonard? Welcome to the stream. Um, the LSP says, just some tips for Doom Eternal... Run best at super high frame rate, excess of 300 FPS on gaming laptops. Nice. You know, maybe maybe Doom Eternal would be a, a game worth adding to the test regiment um, in certain situations. I'll certainly consider it. Um, I'll, I'll, yeah. Obviously a very popular game. 366 FPS for CSGO. And um, just so you guys can see the... Um, the video settings that we're on, we're on the default high settings with full screen enabled 1920 by 1200 resolution. All right, hop into a dust two match. Counter-Strike, arguably the game I have the most in-game time ever spent on. Because all of my junior high and high school years, I played Counter-Strike. So I have like a few thousand hours of Counter-Strike gameplay. So once again, I'm seeing, even though we're 300 to 400 FPS... Um, I'm still seeing a little bit of ghosting happening on the display. So again, this is not... Not the optimal, perfect display for... Not the optimal display for esports gaming. Looks like we have teammates over there now. Looks like they went short. My teammate with an op is just cleaning house over here. Look at all these dead guys. Found the bomb. There's one terrorist left.
Interesting. They made it so that there's no physics to these barrels. We're hunting for the terrorists. That's the Halo theme one. <laughs> All right, we'll just rush mid. See if we can shoot at somebody at least. Am I dead? Am I dead? Oh, guy holding the corner got me. Okay, so, um, and during that match, we were getting like 250 to 300 FPS almost the whole time, which is really great. So um, we've got uh, God of War next. Uh, is the MSI Cyborg 15 RTX 4050 a good laptop? From the perspective of if you can buy it for cheap, it's not bad. Like, you can get some good gameplay out of it. You can play uh, – I would check out my unboxing review of it. It has a poor quality display on the Cyborg 15, and it's a lower wattage part with only one fan. So you're really not getting the full level of performance out of it, and I would not pay full, I would not pay full price for it. I would say wait for it to be on sale um, in the $700 to $800 range and then buy it. Um, if you get the 4060 version, I would say get it for 900 or 950. I wouldn't pay a thousand dollars for a 4060 version of that. Um, but yeah, it's 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 not awful. The gaming laptop it'll play games just fine. Um, it's just not going to be as much performance as you'll get if you get a laptop that has higher higher levels of uh, performance built in. So we got 1920 by 1200 resolution DLSS on quality. Our graphic settings are set to ultra preset. I'll top into our God of War. So we're seeing some pretty high CPU temps for the first time today. 84 degrees, or at least the first time I've noticed it. Um, 81 degrees, 75. Now that we're not loading in the menus, I guess maybe it's a little cooler. But wow, I'm actually surprised at how slammed God of War makes the CPU on this system. All right, so. Things are looking good right here. It's playing well, all ultra settings. Beautiful, all right, here we go. Ready for our benchmarking run. Fifty nine FPS and forty five for a one percent low, very smooth, very playable, um, definitely good performance for an RTX forty fifty in God of War. Um, I do want to point out our boost clock. We are we are hitting high on our boost clock, high on our wattages in this game. Even though we're doing fifty seven watts, fifty one watts to the CPU, we're still pulling eighty to ninety watts on the GPU. So it's nice to see that our GPU wattage is not being crushed when our CPU is also being engaged. And also our temps are still very good all around in the 60 to 70s most of the time. The CPUs did get, CPU temp did get a little hot for a little while there though. Okay, so next up we have Cyberpunk 2077, let's go. Antonio Jackson says, very playable. Yeah, God of War would play really, really well. Absolutely no problem. Um, on ultra settings, too. So.
Okay, so we're gonna go to full screen. We're gonna set ray tracing to ultra. Frame generation to on. DLSS to quality. There we go. All right. Let's see if it's playable. Um, you know, it seems like half the systems with a 4050 or 4060 um, end up chugging in, in Cyberpunk because of VRAM uh, bottlenecking. So we'll, we'll have to see if that happens in this system. Here we go. So far, things are looking very smooth, very playable. Notice that our memory, six, six gigs of VRAM being utilized right now. That's good. Um, you know, we have seen it go up to like the eight before, and right now it's not. Well, I had a, well we're getting some big, big FPS stutters right there. Big stutters again. Our 1% low is struggling, but I'd say 95, 98% of the gameplay has been super fluid and smooth. Um, interesting that our 1% low really dropped there. 68 FPS on average, ray tracing ultra. Everything set to ultra. Very nice. It's, it's, it's extremely nice except for those two hitches that we had in the bar. Everything's been playing very smooth. And it looks great like on the display itself. 69.7 FPS. So basically 70 FPS here. Um, very good. Let's go ahead and try hopping into some gameplay for Cyberpunk 2077. Go shoot him up. I really, I really love it. As you play Cyberpunk 2077, I love all of the different little uh, audio snippets, like the news talking to you over the radio and stuff. It's, it's really great. All right, so here we are. We're in an actual mission now. I like how this guy just docilely just dies for you. So we're doing 75 FPS right now, 62 for a 1% low. Let's go ahead and shoot these guys and check out how the performance is. Oh, yeah. I try not to die in this section. I don't have any health kits though right now. Oh no. Woo, I'm so close to dying. All right, we did it. So average 70 FPS, 55 for our 1% low. Um, that is... Very good, extremely playable, very good low uh, for our FPS overall and for our 1% lows on ultra, ray tracing enabled. Frame generation is turned on. Ideally, I try to shoot for a little higher FPS when frame gen is turned on though. So um, overall though, certainly super playable. Uh, if you wanted to just turn off ray tracing, right? Turn off ray tracing, set everything to ultra. 
with quality. Let's just go to balanced. That's to load everything. Okay, there we go. Now look at us. We're doing 125 FPS in Cyberpunk on Ultra. No ray tracing. The game still looks really good. Isn't that insane? Isn't that awesome? Like, can you imagine doing this level on a, you know, $1199 computer, 120 FPS Cyberpunk Ultra. Obviously no ray tracing, which is one of the special things about, I think, the new generation of GPUs that you can do ray tracing, even on more budgety systems. So, but if you want the fluid gameplay with still good graphics, this laptop can do it. Love to see it. Love to see it. Okay. On to Hogwarts now. Let's go. Woo! It's doing these initial setups here while it's launching. Hogwarts Legacy, a video game I have beaten all the way through to the end. I have caught all of the magical creatures. I have bred them. I have made all the potions. I, did, I didn't do all the side missions, but I did a lot of them. Um, but I completed the entire main story uh, and explored almost the entire world, like finding all the little places on the map. I had a lot of fun in Hogwarts Legacy. It's a game... It's a game I certainly think a lot of people would enjoy. So, can the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16 play Hogwarts Legacy smoothly? Let's find out. You know, it's interesting. This whole preparing shaders thing, right? If you play this game on the Asus Ally, there is no preparing shaders loading bar. It just instantly goes into the, the game. I have no idea why. I have no idea. It's, it's so interesting though that the ally just like almost instantly loads in. Ray tracing eats the hell out of the FPS. Wonder if it's worth it. Yeah, the, the tricky part about ray tracing um, is some games, it really does make the game look better. And in other games, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. In some games, it's like the, the default shadowing and processing effects look pretty much as good as the ray traced version. Or in some cases, maybe even better because it was originally done with non-ray tracing in mind and ray tracing was just tacked on after the fact. Um, so it really varies. Notice... The CPU doing 131 watts right now while we're loading these shaders. And the CPU temps are also spiking up to like the 80s and 90s, uh, temporarily at least. That's like the hottest temperature I've seen on the CPU all day. Um, went up to like 80, 90 for just a flash for a moment there. Um, yeah, very interesting. <laughs> All right. Woo. Okay, so we need to change it from FSR to DLS on quality. Frame generation is enabled. Frame rate is uncapped. It was looks like it was using my settings that I was using on the Ally because it was on FSR. All right, so everything's going to be on Ultra. We want textures to be on low, though, because the textures are going to be insane. 
Ray tracing is currently set to off. Let's see what we get with ray tracing set to off, and then we'll turn it on and restart, because you have to restart the game when you turn ray tracing on. Um, let's see what we get in Hogsmeade with everything as it... Basically, ultra settings with textures on low is essentially what we're going to be running. All right. Wow. Very nice. This is great. 112 FPS, 40 for our 1% low. We're not stuttering hardly at all. Yeah, in general, this is a great game uh, to play with ray tracing disabled. Wahee! Yeah, this, and look at this temps. 58 degrees, 61 degrees. <laughs> really good temperatures. Um, and this is the most demanding part of this game. It is just going to get better from here, basically. All right, so we're going to turn ray tracing on, and you'll see the FPS tank into the dirt once again. Uh, but we'll have to restart the system to do that. Okay, so we're ready to restart the game now. Um, LSP says, only worth it in some games like Metro Exodus or Cyberpunk. Uh, so Lex says, I have a $1,000 budget. What is the best laptop I can buy at that price range? So I did talk about this um, earlier. What's the best laptop right now for $1,000? This is only going to be active for the next few hours, but it is... So it's going to take a minute to load the game, uh, this, this thing back up again. It's... Two, two, two. So thousand dollars. This deal is only active for a little while longer. This Acer Nitro Five with a thirty seventy Ti, nine ninety nine, QHD one sixty five hertz display with a high color gamut. Um, you can buy it at Best Buy, but please use the link off my sheet here um, if you want to help support me as a content creator. Um, when you buy it, if you do decide to buy it. Now, this does not have frame generation. That's the biggest disadvantage to it. Other than that, it's a really Phenomenal amount of graphics power for the money. Just absolutely mind blowing and a really, really good display for a thousand dollars, too. So it's just kind of a budgety build, plasticky build um, that's not as nice. That's the main downside to it. Um, but other than that, it's just crazy levels of performance for the money for the CPU and GPU put together and display quality all, to, all in all, thousand dollars. It's the best deal I've seen probably all year. Um, yeah, like literally, probably like it. Yeah. Now, as far as if anyone's watching this after the fact, and it's, you know, you're looking at other deals cause this deal is no longer available cause it's only going to be here for a little while. Um, you know, going with the Lenovo LOQ, um, I know the Omen 16 was for a, uh, there were several laptops that are $1,000, and I'd recommend getting a 4050 or 4060. Sometimes we see a 4060 go down to $1,000 here and there. Right now, we don't have any 4060s that are $1,000. Um, if you want to save some money and you want something more portable, another really good deal right now is the Zephyrus G14. This little, little guy, very portable, very small, thin, light, $799 with an RTX 3060. Really great deal right now as well. High quality display. I've done a review on this exact laptop uh, a couple of years ago when it came out, and it is a really great system in my opinion. Um, so that would be the other deal I would say is just phenomenal right now. Again, I think both of those deals are only going to last probably to the end of the day, and then they're gone. Okay, we're back into Hogwarts. We should have ray tracing enabled now. Ray tracing is enabled. All right. I 
I think if these laptops were in my room, they'd heat up pretty easily. Do you have like a small room or something? Interesting. So uh, the one thing I will say about, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about that Acer Nitro 5, right? That's $1,000, 3070 Ti. This laptop with a 4050 in frame generation enabled games is gonna get smoother frame rates because of frame gen than the 3070 Ti. But that's the only scenario where this laptop beats that laptop, in my opinion, at least most likely. Okay, so we've enabled ray tracing. We are going from 110 FPS approximately down to 75, and our 1% low is also dropped down to only 24, which is not as good. All right, and once again, I am seeing just a little bit of ghosting on the display. It's not awful, but it is something that if you're someone who's very sensitive to it, will notice. Okay, and here goes our benchmarking run. Wow, the 1% low is doing really good now that we rented the city once. Okay, 70 for our average, 32 for our 1% low. I do wanna point out that we are getting some lower end textures even right here in front of me. These are some lower end textures. If we go to higher level textures, we will see better detail here. Um, Hogwarts is a game where higher level textures does make a difference and that is one of the downsides of getting an RTX 4050, 4060, or 4070, you may not be able to even go to medium textures. Going to medium textures, I think we'll see more details. So now we're seeing a bit more detail on these little, um, these little guys right here, these boxes and stuff. Getting better detail, like look at that detail. Um, right there if we go to uh well the game crashed i was going to show you i was going to show you another um couple of examples going to higher textures but the game crashed so um that's okay we'll move on i believe we have uh going into dead space the new remake next perfect Hogwarts was ready for us to move on. <laughs> Gizmo, is the Legion LOQ or lock good? Yes, I do think the, Le the Lenovo lock um, has a lot of potential to be good on the budget level. It doesn't have good RGB. It doesn't have much flair to the display or overall chassis. Like the Legion Pro 7 has a lot of extra RGB elements and a little higher build quality elements. But... The Lenovo Lock should deliver a great gaming experience for the money. So, like, should have good thermals and good all-around system design. Um, it's just not going to be a very premium experience in general because the lower quality display and chassis. Uh, so Lexi says, there's no big difference when RTX is on or off in this game. Um, well, I would say it is a big difference because we got, like, basically... 35 to 40 FPS more with RTX disabled. That's a pretty big difference. And the 1% low was also much better. Um, and visually speaking, it was almost indistinguishable with ray tracing enabled or disabled. I don't know. It's up to you if you want to put it on or not. Okay, so we have... We are set to ultra quality preset, DLS mode to quality. 1920 by 1200 resolution. Let's see what we get, just looking up here at the USG. And let's see what our our temps are like. Wow, the temps are so good in this game. Our CPU temp staying 75 to 82 range. 
Notice how much watts we're pulling through the CPU. 80 watts, 60 to 80 watts of power, 87 watts of power to the CPU, very good. GPU pulling 73 watts, 63 degrees on the GPU is phenomenal, 70 on the CPU, staying so cool overall. Now this is a game where if we were to change our, FPI, our, our fan profile and turn off max fan, I'm pretty sure our performance and temps are gonna change a lot. So um, tempted to show you that to you. Let's try it. All right, so let's go to um, fan control, we'll set to auto. We'll go to quiet mode. So, hmm, quiet fans, they're so dang quiet. Wow. Wow. Our performance is still pretty dang good considering we're quiet now. 70 FPS, 27 for a 1% low, 35 watts to the CPU, 58 to the GPU. That's a good amount of wattage to the CPU and GPU put together. And our temps are still good, 65, 66. Woof. Oh, now our FPS is coming down, 55. Interesting. Okay, our performance definitely took a pretty big hit. Um, down to 54 FPS now, because we were, you know, we were doing 75 FPS, right? So that's a pretty big difference. All right. And I feel like our 1% low right now is struggling a lot too. That might be related to our fan profile. I don't know. Um, let's go, let's switch to, uh, let's go to turbo mode. Let's go, we got, it's like adjusting everything right now. Look at our G CPU wattage is pulling much higher. Temps are going up. Fans are coming up to be much louder. Our 1% low as we turn around is much better again. 82 FPS right there. Okay, that's much better all around. Let's try turning on max fans, see if it gets much louder. So turbo is basically putting the fans to maximum already. Dead Space is a game that really can demand a lot from the CPU. That's why, that's why what we're seeing the performance we're seeing right now. Very good all around performance. 85 FPS on average, 23 for a 1% low. It's a bit low on our 1%, but other than that, very good. All right, let's go ahead and do our walking benchmark test. The 1% low is doing really good at 45, though it wasn't, you know, we did have some little bit of dips when we were facing the other way. Seventy four FPS on average, forty eight for a one percent low. Excellent, truly excellent for a um, more budgety oriented. Yeah, this is awesome. Great gaming experience in Dead Space for sure. Love to see it. Love to see it. Okay, next up, Last of Us Part One. Let's go.
Sluxy says, I mean, the look of the game or the graphics, not the FPS. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a lot of the games do a really good job of simulating ray tracing with the default shadows, you know, and that's where it's like enabling it, disabling it. Do you really need to have ray tracing enabled? You know, NVIDIA's done a good job of marketing to us that we hey, we're supposed to, but do we really? Do we really, really? You know, maybe not. Um, probably okay without it if in the vast majority of games, it still look good. Okay. So let's check out our graphics and display options. RTX 4050, we're going to go to borderless windows, our only option. Disable VSync, unlocked frame rate. DLSS is set to quality. All right. For our graphics, we are going to set to ultra settings and then we're going to set textures down to I believe medium. Yeah, medium should be good. Notice this bar up here indicates when we're in a good um, VRAM situation. Does this 4050 only have six gigs of VRAM? Yeah, I think it does. I think it only has six gigs of VRAM. I thought that all the 4050s had eight gigs. Very interesting. Um, Obviously, some just come with six. Where is our GPU information? It's not in the summary here. But right there, it's indicating, you know, that we have six gigs total. See? It's indicating 59, 5,935 megabytes or six gigs. So we're right at the cap right here. Very interesting. We've had such good performance from this system considering that it has no, it uh, doesn't have the full eight gigs like most 4050s, I thought. Let me just double check this. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go double check this right now because um, I could just be... Am I crazy? I thought I thought 4050s were supposed to come with 8 gigs of VRAM. Um, oh, no, it says 6 gigs of VRAM. Interesting. I, for some reason, thought it had 8. But do all 4050s only have six? I don't know. Maybe I'm just brain farting hard right now. Yeah, all of these are listed as six gigs of VRAM. Interesting. So I guess you go to the 4060. The 4060 has eight gigs. Okay, so, so yeah, this is the standard amount. I'm just being ridiculous right now, not remembering. Okay, so I'm very impressed. Considering we only got six gigs of VRAM in the 4050 here, that is, it's, it's making a great use of the VRAM that it has. And of course, six gigs of VRAM does pair pretty well with 1080p or basically full HD, which is 1200p in this scenario since it's 16 by 10. Um, yeah. Yeah, Big Foe Boy says 450 should have six gigs of your room. I'm just being silly. Um, anyway, okay, so going to Last of Us right now, we're in the intro here. 
We're getting 86 FPS on average. 72 for a 1% low is phenomenal. I'm, I just reset it again just now. And we'll see how we do through this whole intro cinematic. It is really good temps, really good FPS, considering we're on ultra settings with medium textures. Man, the graphics in this game are just insanely good. <laughs> Jeez, the detail on the hair and the way the clothes move. Yeah, it's just the it's really impressive. Averaging ninety five FPS, seventy six for a one percent low. Whoo, that is so good. What do you think about this model, Legion Seven I, I nine thirty eighty? So I had that. Uh, Osama, I had that uh, exact laptop. I really liked it overall. Okay, so now that we're in the game, let's go ahead and refresh. We got a new FPS counter up here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. We'll walk through the hallways here a bit. You know, you could obviously set the settings in this game to be a bit lower uh, to get better FPS. Uh, So 84 FPS, 60 for our 1% low. Just really phenomenal overall experience in Last of Us for ultra settings except medium textures. I mean, yeah. There's not too much more you could want in that scenario, right? Um, except maybe v more VRAM. Let's go Dying Light 2 and see how we do. High quality ray tracing, full screen, DLSS on quality, frame generation is enabled. All of this looks correct. Go ahead and save those settings. And we're gonna benchmark. All right. Ninety three FPS. Man, it's just so amazing that an entry level gaming laptop, you know, I guess this is a little bit higher than entry level because it is twelve hundred, but it's just barely because it's a forty fifty in it. 
It's amazing that a 4050 can just crank the FPS like this with high quality settings and ray tracing enabled. Temps right now are excellent, 61 and 66. 82 watts to the GPU, 49 to the CPU. Means we're being GPU bound primarily. Um, though the CPU is in a high level of demand. And man, I am, I'm loving it. It is, it is very impressive. Doing 107 FPS right now. For 1080p gaming, this is just like a perfect pairing almost uh, of a 4050 and it's not 1080p, full HD plus. 92 for our median, 80 for our, our min, which is really, really good, obviously. Dying Light 2, absolutely killing it. Um, so next up, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Let's go. All right. Exclusive full screen. DLSS is on quality. 165 hertz refresh rate. Highest quality settings with ray tracing on ultra. Let's do it. King Dragon says, hopefully you can review the Legion Slim Pro 9. It's a creator laptop with 3.2K, 165 hertz display, and a 4060. There's been no proper review on it yet. A 4050 is like 30% faster than a 3050 Ti. Sorry, a 4050 is like 30% faster than a 3050 Ti with more VRAM. Then the 4060 is an extra 20% faster and even more video RAM. I don't know if a 4060 is 20% faster than a 4050. I guess maybe. It's going to depend on the 4050 and the 4060 though, because this is this 4050 is going to beat like a low wattage 4060 in like the Cyborg 15, for example, right? So DLSS is on quality, 165 hertz, ray tracing is on ultra. Okay, we're ready to go. A 4050 should be about equal in performance to a 3060. Um, yeah, like a high power 3060, that's true. Yeah, a 4050 versus 4060. I mean, it's, it's really going to depend on the scenario, right? Because you get a Cyborg 15 against this one. Even if the Cyborg 15 has a 4060, it's going to underperform compared to this 4050. But... That's like worst case scenario for a 4060 because it's only 45 watts. If they both have good juice to them, uh, to the CPU and GPU, uh, then yeah, I think 15 to 25% is the right range and probably averaging around 20% difference. Yeah, it would make sense. The 4060 is between the 3060 and 3070 in raw performance. Yeah, but then when you look at like, you know, all the new games using frame generation, it really blows the 3070 out of the water, like a 4060, really, and a 4050, really, realistically. Um, but in terms of raw performance, yeah, that's probably accurate. So right now doing 72 FPS, so 1920 by 1200, averaging 70 something FPS, perfectly playable, Super smooth. I mean, once again, we're in the situation where a 4050 is crushing it. And it's like, if you're just doing 1080p gaming, what do you really need something more powerful for almost? Unless you just really want high FPS gaming uh, every time. Nah, I get it. You know, like I kind of do. I want, I want high FPS gaming and QHD resolution. That's where a 4080 or 4090 really makes a big difference. But if you're happy with full HD resolutions then, I mean, the gameplay quality is still so good at 1200p resolution. 
So, man, the temps in this laptop are just so good. 59 degrees on the GPU, 62 on the CPU. Ooh, man, that is awesome. That is just awesome. I really appreciate how this GPU basically stays lockstep at max clock speed. Um, I'm guessing that's just the 4080 nature of it, but, or sorry, 40, 4050 nature of the 4050 and turbo mode that, that the Neo 16 has. But, um, you know, a lot of the GPUs kind of go up and down in terms of clock speeds bouncing around, but this one just seems to be like lockstep max. Eighty one FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that's phenomenal. And yeah, eighty that's it's really, really good. All right. Moving into The Witcher 3, let's see how The Witcher 3 plays. Last game of the day, then we're gonna do a summary of everything that we've talked about. Um, a summary of all of these topics over here on the top, uh, on the side over here. So we're going to talk about value, um, quality control, all of this display tester speaker fan noise. We're going to, we're going to talk about it all. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so graphics, ray tracing ultra. DLSS is set to quality. 1920 by 1200 frame generation is enabled. Looks like all of our settings are already preset to be the correct ones. We're just gonna hop into an area first, run around and then uh, kill a couple things. And then we'll go to our benchmarking area. I am now part of the way through the story. In The Witcher 3, it's the main game I'm playing right now besides Brotato, Brotato. And I gotta say, The Witcher 3 is just such a f incredibly well-written game. All right, so 54 FPS right now. That is a bit lower than I would ideally like, I gotta tell you. In terms of like, if I were to try to do this action combat, obviously perfectly playable. So if we wanted to bump our FPS to be just much better, all we gotta do is turn off ray tracing. Boom, now we're running everything ultra settings with no ray tracing and we're doing like 100 FPS. So this is how I would want to play the game if I was playing on this system. And it would be just, it would be a perfect, absolutely perfect experience. Um, minus ray tracing not being enabled, but still. Okay, so let's flip ray tracing back on. We're going to go ahead and load up. The correct autosave. Would you choose the Nitro 5 or the Le uh, Legion Lock? Fernando, I would need to know the specific specs of each one, but I would probably pick the one that had the better specs between the CPU, GPU, and display 
primarily focusing on the GPU. Like if I get a 4060 instead of a 4050, I'll go with the 4060. And then if I get a better quality display, that would be the next deciding factor. Um, in terms of build quality, I think the lock is probably a little bit better. Okay, so here we are. Witcher 3, everything set to high settings, ultra ray tracing, DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled. See what we get. This is the same test I do every time in The Witcher 3, so I can do some, some, uh, some comparisons. Okay, so 62 FPS, 47 for our 1% lows. Very, very good performance. Again, if I was playing this game on this laptop, I would just go in here and turn off ray tracing. And now I'm, now I'm freaking... Juice to the gills, 100 FPS in The Witcher 3. Just a phenomenal experience all around. Perfect. Okay, so there's all the games tested. Uh, all of the benchmarks done. Let's talk final summary and thoughts. All right. We are also going to go ahead and turn off max fan mode. All right. Cool. Ah, yes. Okay, so value comparison, this laptop versus the competition. All right, so we've done, um, you know, I've done reviews now on what, like six or seven RTX 4050 laptops and about 12 4060 laptops. This thing did really well. Probably arguably the best temperatures went under max fans of any of the 4050, 4060 laptops that we've tested. The Strix G16 was right up there with it, very closely matching the temperatures, but I would say this was just a little bit better temperature wise. In terms of value, this guy is costing more than the Lenovo Lock. It's costing more than the Nitro 5 series. It's costing more than um, some of the, like the HP Omen 16. When there's an on sale, like this thing at $1199 is a bit of a premium price for an RTX 4050. But you, you do get 16 gigs of fast RAM. You do get a much brighter display 400 nits, or we measured 391 nits of brightness on the display. And it's a fairly high color gamut display. It's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, if that's important to you. Now, um, I feel like for value, this guy really delivers value in the sense that it's optimized well, it's got excellent thermals, and the display is awesome. The display is awesome. It's one of the better displays that you can possibly get in this price segment without a doubt. And it's very important to note that the display upgrade may be worth at least $100 in value compared to the competition, especially the MSI laptops that have a terrible display. But even compared to the Asus Strix G16, which only like a 300 nit display, this guy's 100 nits brighter. That's noticeable. That's going to be noticeable and make this laptop, I think, have a little more value to it in that sense. All right. So quality control. This thing is high quality, but it's a lot of plastic. It's kind of a plasticky feel to the laptop. You know, um, I'm pretty sure this is a plastic or maybe it's hard. To, honestly, it's hard to tell if this is plastic or metal, but I think this is plastic keyboard deck, metal top lid. Build quality on this is not as good as like the Strix G16 or Zephyrus G16, but it's close. It's a little better than 
the the cheapest laptops out there. Um, the keyboard and mouse are good, not great. Plastic touchpad doesn't slide as smoothly, has decent click. Definitely more of a budgety build in terms of keyboard and trackpad, but the layout of the keyboard is good. The backlighting is good. You got four zone RGB backlighting. It's very nice. I, I, it'll work well for typing, generally speaking, and it's got nice functionality with volume, pause, play. Um, the home end and delete keys, page up, page down, those are on the number pad. Those are not ideally placed. If you, needed to, if you need to press home and end a lot or page up, page down, that might be a drawback here. Yeah. But other than that, Everything is backlit, including the secondary functions on the keys, which I do like that. That's that's a thumbs up. That's something the Strix G16 does not have. The, the Strix G16 backlighting is a bit more wishy-washy in terms of quality of backlighting. Um, the webcam was meh. Was not as bad. It's not the worst quality webcam, but it was not the best. Um, speakers were some of the worst we have tested. I have tested all year long. It The, the bass was muddled. The mids, not that amazing, and the overall volume, not that loud. It'll work. It'll you'll you'll it'll work just fine though. Like it's kind of like your average gaming laptop from like you know more of budgety gaming laptop speakers. Overall, I give the speakers like a six out of ten rating. Not super loud. Not super high quality. Not the kind of thing I would be like. Yeah, I can't wait to pump up the bass. You know, play my music on this and fill my room with audio. Like my phone would have better speakers than this. My iPhone 14 has better speakers than this, for sure. So just to give you an example. Um, though the iPhone 14 does have better speakers than some a fair number of laptops. Okay. Display quality, definitely above average, about 400 nits. Not great color gamut, uh, but still pretty good. Basically 100% sRGB, about 88 on the P3 and Adobe Spectrum, um, 87, 88 in that range. It's going to be good for Photoshop. It's going to be good for video, good enough for video editing. Um, the biggest problem I have with the display is that I don't know if G-Sync isn't working properly or maybe uh, the display, th there's just a decent amount of ghosting happening on this display. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know if it's a delayed response time is the issue because of the new 16 by 10 panel options and the higher brightness. I was noticing ghosting in almost every game we played at least a little bit. Uh, and I'm very sensitive to it because I'm an esports gamer and I look for it. I know what to look for. I'm a reviewer. I look for this stuff. Um, and I could definitely tell that we were not getting optimal, uh, optimal response times. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to make sure when I plug this in, are we actually, maybe, maybe what the problem was, I'm going to see. Could be the problem was that we were only running at 60 hertz for the display setting. That may have been the problem. Okay. That I believe was the issue. So I just checked, I just checked the Windows um, display resolution and advanced settings, and we were set to 60 hertz on the response rate. Sure, you guys can see that 60 hertz right here. That's why we were getting kind of the ghosting jagginess. Uh, now that I go to 165, I think if I were to play games, we should have perfect response rate. Um, I'm gonna have to plug back in my external SSD. Okay. I, I want to pop. I want to pop back into Apex Legends and just check this, and make sure. You know, it's the weird part was that all the games were saying they were setting it to 165 hertz refresh rate inside of the game, and it looked to me like it was that level of refresh rate. But at the same time, we were getting kind of getting that jankiness. So maybe it was the 60 hertz refresh rate. I don't know. Uh, okay, so. Let's get, while this is loading in, I'm going to continue down our list here, okay? Fan noise testing with decimal meter. If you set this thing to quiet or balanced mode, it is juicy. It is so 
quiet and good performance with good temperatures still, I'm super impressed. Two giant thumbs up for fan noise with thermals being combined together. If you set this to balance mode or quiet mode, you're going to have good performance in games and a very quiet all-around system, which I think a lot of people are looking for these days. I just wish the speaker system was a great pair to that because if you have low fan noise but mediocre speakers, it's still harder to enjoy the speaker quality, though. Yeah, that's, that is certainly something that's like a kind of a catch 22, I guess, you know, um, in terms of low, low, low fan noise, but mediocre speaker quality kind of canceling each other out. Um, Cinemage R23, only 14,000. That is a bit low for, um, compared to the competition this year, you know, a lot of laptops in the 1200 to $1,400 range are doing 18 to 20,000, um, for their Cinebench R23 scores. And I think this laptop could get there if you raise the power limit to 140 watts using Intel XTU, um, cause we were seeing insane levels of power of 144 watts being sustained in this i5 processor, which is just so crazy. Six P cores, eight E cores, 14 overall cores, um, 20 threads, in this processor, which is crazy for an i5 processor because it's an HX processor. Um, overall, very good performance, I gotta say, for a CPU in all of the games we tested. It's just the synthetic score really was the primary issue. Um, okay, and I am in Apex Legends now, and I'm just gonna do a quick, a quick follow-up test here. This is so much better now that we are in 165 hertz refresh rate on the display. Yes, it was the 60 hertz response rate. That was the reason why we were running into the little ghosting issues. I feel so silly now, but I'm glad I caught it before the end of the review, okay? So um, 60 hertz versus 165 is a night and day difference. Um, I wish I had double checked the refresh rate sooner, but I'm glad I thought to think to check it before the end of the review. Anyway, this is perfect. This is perfect for esports now, in my opinion. No issues whatsoever in the esports department. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, Apex Legends. We were doing over 200 FPS in 1920 by 1200. Warzone 2, we were doing 94 FPS. Again, about 60 for our 1% lows. Very good. Counter-Strike, we were doing 300 FPS. God of War, 60, 65 FPS in that range. Um, Ultra Settings, great gaming experience. Cyberpunk, um, we were doing like 65, 75 FPS with Ultra Settings and everything turned on. Turning off ray tracing bumped us up to 125 FPS. Hogwarts, we were doing like 80 FPS. Really good performance overall and really surprising. Sorry about that. Surprisingly good 1% lows as well, around like the 30 to 40 for our 1% lows. Dead Space, also very good FPS, 82, 84 FPS or something like that with our standard test. Um, and really good temperatures all around um, in all of these games, uh, especially at max fans. Now, if we're not at max fans, we were still getting pretty good performance, but, um, you know, the performance noticeably went down, degraded, uh, and man, that said, the temperatures were still good. The performance was still good enough Um that if you want to run this thing in quiet mode, you can, but I would probably just put it in balanced mode where the fans are just a little bit audible and you're still getting like 80 to 90% of the performance in that mode. If you really want to take performance to the next level, set it to balanced mode and then undervolt and overclock the GPU. Uh, I showed how to do that in the Zephyrus G14 uh, undervolting overclocking guide I did a couple days ago or like, a, like about a five or six days ago. Check out my live stream history. I go into all the details on how to do a curve edit to um, to get to basically undervolt the GPU to boost the performance at the same or similar wattage levels that just drops the wattage down, um, but get the, get a higher clock speed. And the performance was awesome. The temperatures went down and the wattage went down um, all at the same time. So um, Last of Us Part 1, 85, 75 to 85 FPS in there, no stuttering 
in any of the games today. Um, the 1% lows in every single game we tested was good, which I cannot say that about all the RTX 4050 laptops I have tested. There's been some that have struggled in Cyberpunk, for example, um, or in Hogwarts. And it, this laptop, for some reason, did really well in all of them. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 82 FPS. The Witcher 3, doing around 60 FPS, 45 for a 1% low when everything's to, to maximum with ray tracing enabled. Turn off ray tracing. We were getting 90 to 105 FPS. Just phenomenal gaming experience. Um, with this laptop, there's almost nothing that I can complain about in terms of gaming performance at 1920 by 1200 resolution on ultra settings in all the games we tested. It was just a great all-around experience. If you spend more money, you'll get a little bit more performance. Yes, you get a 4060, you get a 4070, you go up to a 4080, 4090, you'll just be cranking the FPS like overkill at 1200p resolution. If you want to go to QHD resolution, that's when I really recommend an upgrade to like a higher tier GPU um, for sure. Now, a 4060, 4070 could be worth the upgrade if it's only 150 to $200, but clearly... The RTX 4050 in this Neo 16 is tuned right and is performing well. All the drivers have come together to give a phenomenal gaming experience for the money. Even at $1,200, I'm just thinking this system is optimized, great display. Um, the main downsides with this machine compared to something like the Zephyrus G16, this thing is chunkier. It's bigger than the G16. If you compare this to the Strix G16, the Strix G16 is just cooler looking and more premium looking with the RGB implementation um, and a glass touchpad on both of those laptops. The plastic touchpad really is a bummer, in my opinion, if you're after a more, a more premium experience. Um, so, dun to dun. Can I recommend the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16? Yes, absolutely. At $1,200, given the display quality and how well optimized the system is, I think I can recommend it at the full $1,200 price point, even when compared to the competition out there. That said, there are other laptops with 4060s for $1,200, and most likely you're gonna get more FPS out of those laptops. But those laptops probably don't have as nice of a display and probably aren't as optimized, thermally speaking. Not going to run as cool as this thing. Um, but they'll probably have better touchpad and they'll probably have better speakers, maybe even a better webcam. So those are your trade-offs you're getting with the Neo 16. I like this machine. I can definitely recommend it. I think at $1,200, it's an okay deal. You can definitely buy it and not feel bad about it um, at... $1,100 if it goes on sale, it's a it's just a really great deal. At $1,000, it's just going to be a really, really great deal. Um, just because of the overall quality of the system, the display, the thermals, the ports on this being two Thunderbolt 4s, um, three USB A's, a micro SD card slot. I mean, this thing's got a lot of ports, and they're high quality ports as well. They did not skimp on the ports on this thing. That's my Neo 16 review. I'm going to take a look at chat and see if you have any questions. Let's check it out. Okay. Okay. Checking, checking, checking. Uh, how do I feel about the Flex uh, X16? I believe you mean the Flow X16 compared to other laptops trying to work with my hand disability and need some input. Um, I did get my hands on the Flow X16 from Asus. Pretty awesome design, and I love the upgradability of the XG Mobile slot. That said, it is very thin, it is very portable, and it is lots of you know multifunctional, right? Because it can flip and invert and all that stuff. Um, I haven't been able to do a full review on it, and I think you're going to paying a really big premium price if you're going to go with the Flow X16. So, not a terrible option, but not necessarily the best uh, out there. Um, Okay. I think that's it for the chat questions. Keeping it short today. That's all good. Um, yeah. Overall, two thumbs up for the Lenovo 
or sorry, not the Lenovo, the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16, two giant thumbs up. Just wait for a sale if you want to get the best deal possible. Um, otherwise, it's still a pretty good, pretty good deal at $11.99. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.